is now 5.32. We're calling the special meeting to order. All trustees are present. Um, at this time, uh, we are going to move to public comment. Trustee Spradley? We don't have public comment. Okay, we're moving to regular session. We've got reports of the superintendent. Dr. Wright? I mean, <laughs> <laughs>
the, so, so here we go. Tact, tactical team, right there, strategic team, right here. And in concrete terms, that lets you see that. And I think it's important to just kind of start getting your head really wrapped around. The, um, tonight, we're going to talk about a balanced scorecard approach. I, and I like to think about the strategic role is the team that is constantly working on the system as opposed to working in the system. So, by the way, no one's working on the system. There's no teacher at the front line of any organization that's going to say, hey, I noticed we don't have a strategic plan. Do you mind if I put a bunch of other teachers together and we'll put one together over the group that's just not going to happen. So the strategic role is very um, powerful for a five-year correction that's being said. But there has to be clarity about the tactical team. The strategic team has to get what we're agreeing on to get accomplished right to reach consensus. And then we ask the tactical team to go show us their best thinking with all the, I probably could put a rock right now if I did a master's, I don't put a rock, but I'm, I'm just saying I did a master's, the educational doctor is all around the table, so the tactical team has that expertise to um, deliver on what the strategic team says in the court. Okay, so you go to some board training occasionally, and you know, you just maybe hear what I'm trying to describe as, or do you stay above the line and let the tactical team, you know, do the work below the line? I heard that said, I disagree with that terminology. I'm just saying that's the way I've heard it described. I think what we have the possibility of creating here is a harmonious cadence of accountability between the tactical team and the strategic team. That's our, every single word is purposefully chosen. Harmonious meaning strategic role, understands the strategic role, willing to stay in the strategic role, doesn't mean that the tactical team does whatever they want, whenever they want. We don't have regular reports on how are we doing. The tactical team understands that even though tonight we may present, I'm just going to say this just as concretely tonight, a, a, a recommendation of a list of strategic objectives, ultimately that's the board's to approve, right? We talked about that the other day on Zoom. This is our best. Yes, but we don't own column two. The board owns column two. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. We think we have a robust discussion. We think we've got it about value two. But column two on the balance scorecard is the board's. Then tonight, as soon as I finish this not so short preamble, we'll, uh, we'll dig into the difference between the strategic role, column two, and then the tactical goal rounding out the key strategic actions and, and definitely the lead measures. All right, so I want that's kind of a reminder of three essential roles. And by the way, the operational role, or is, you know, the other 80% or 85% of the organization that is serving our uh, customers directly, parents, students, taxpayers, face to face. I really perseverated on staff satisfaction data when I was a superintendent, probably to a fault. Like, you know, Early in my career, it was, you know, I hope they love me. You know, in the end, it was, I hope they don't roll their eyes when they hear my name. <laughs> like, I got here over time, you just realize, if I'm a superintendent in a big school district, and my name is said, and no teacher from their night side rolls their eyes, that is a win. You know, it just embraces. So, we're, that's, so that's the operational role that looks to the tactical role that looks to the strategic role. To see two or three really is there clarity. Is there common language? Is what we're being asked to do being modeled by the tactical team and the strategic team? Are you asking us to, at the front line, perform like a professional learning community or, or just in that framework or in that collaborative mindset? But then I see the tactical team constantly at odds with each other and they've got a lot of silos. So they come over to the campus and tell us to break down silos and they retreat back to their silos and operate within silos. See that? Uh, we want to operate with a lot of a culture 
of harmony and collaboration at the campus level, but I don't see it at the tactical level, and I don't see it at the strategic level. It's that, that you can't tell me what to do if you're not willing to model what you're expecting everyone else to do in the organization. So that's really the harmony part of this hormone, a harmonious cadence of accountability. Let's be clear, this, this structure is about accountability. And it is, it, it, what it's not is about external accountability. If the state says we're doing a good job, then we're doing a good job. We should care about that. I mean, we should care for a minute. Right. But not for several We're years. setting our own standards. Right. right. This is the standards. I heard a superintendent the other night say it this way. A trustee said, so are we not going to look at the STAR test? And he said, no, sir, we're going to look at the STAR test. It is a measure. It is just not the measure for our district level. I love that. It's a measure. We have to look at it. We have some other measures that we're going to look at also. And so I thought it was interesting. The board president said, so if we get an A district, are we going to put it like up in the map or Yeah. Like, you know, is that going up here like the banner across the top? That's a pretty good question. If we're saying that it's one measure, not the measure, one measure, and we achieve a district, we're kind of saying that a district doesn't go up here. Right? Like the band. Because we it's right down here, right where we said it should be. And we're checking on that, and then we're I'm looking at curriculum people now, NWA map, and however many other in, uh, end of year data sets that we have. So that's a big part of what we're doing now. I distributed uh, the SWOT analysis and just called it okay, yes. all the way. Okay. Um, um, the, just a reminder that the board and so the strategic team and the tactical team took these without looking at each other, right? So these, these were done just lying to what the other one said. And I, as a tactical man, you, I, I think you should feel pretty good that those two roles saw the district very similarly. Do you all see when you're looking? Like there is just a lot of we see like this big disconnect. Now, by the way, the tactical team should always have more than the strategic team because you know they're kind of closer to the front line, right? So when I see just a lot of a very similar read on the district, what's I always enjoy looking at these because the board if you really look at it and take some time to study it. You know, it, it's the difference is hard that the board was looking at this through a bigger picture and you can see that. So anyway, I just I wanted everyone just to have a copy of this. I think it's just good, good to have it. Now the reason this is important is as we're working on a district scorecard, um, especially we've been talking about designing out column three that we'll talk about a little bit more in just a moment. We should always keep our eyes on what we perceive were the weaknesses and the opportunities in our brains. So like I'll, just, I'll tell you, you know, right now, the last thing we're going to do when this is finished, whenever that is, in the coming weeks, we're going to go back to this, and we're going to read every word and see if what we still identified as opportunities, are they embedded in our future action? Like we said, this is the stuff we ought to be thinking about, so did we get, did we get to it with our strategic action? Okay, that's that. That's why you have the SWAT, Strength, Weakness, Opportunity, Threat. Then there's two documents that went around and noticed that one of them says, I think P1, and then one of them, one of them says indicator two. So indicator one and indicator two. These are written for trustees. I wanted the tactical team to have a copy of it because in my opinion, the strategic team of the board can only accomplish this work as a best practice when the tactical team understands their role in supporting the board accomplish these things. Does that make sense? So that that's why I wanted you all to have, we're not going to dig into this deeply, but I wanted the tactical team to have this to look at it and think about, okay, if, if the board's going uh, they're going to go through this checklist of how, you know, to set the groundwork for the development.
development of a balanced scorecard, then for, as a tactical team, how do I set the board on that? How do I help the board on that? Instead of like, okay, that's the board stuff, you know, build up the board. Oh, I'm, I'm part of the tactical team, how do we support them? So the first one, just that, I'm not going to read these, but they were, these really are reference options for the boards that they live in. But the first one is the board's role, probably should have brought this last one. Uh, I think they did, but I think we just adopted so much, like we just didn't get it to because it's not part of this. This is the board's um, role here in the development of the school board. That means it's kind of like how do I stay in the strategic lane while I know a bunch of tactical work is being done. So just a few checklists, questions to think about, and um, just trust that. I know I told the trustees this, but I don't think that I told the administrative team. This work started when I was president at SMUC and I was a board member on the teacher retirement system. I was trying to find a way to flip the switch off of being the superintendent. As I walked in the TRS building, flip the switch and made a board member. That's hard because I mean I'm driving down the road and going the whole way from church to Austin, just superintending the whole way. And then I've got to be a board member. So a lot of these checklists started, these were actually checklists for me to get in board mode prior to you know, putting my superintendent hat to the side of being a board mode. I would really like to uh, find an like, introduction and look at the indicator two. So this is probably the most important one and germane to tonight's conversation the most. So it's, we're implementing the scorecard, which tonight, that's the purpose of tonight's meeting. And how does the board um, and the strategic role support the implementation of the school program? That's what this proper is all about. And if you, you, know, if you see the what and the why, I'm not saying that that's not important. It's, this is really more about the how. And the how on this one um, is, if I had to like summarize it without looking at it, it's how to ask you a good question. <coughs> How to think strategically and just ask really good questions. I think I told the board that when I first got on the TRS uh, board, I was at the coffee pot meeting with some coffee, and one of the governor's direct appointees, that's a financial guy here in Dallas, I looked at him, he'll call me a great guy. We've been on the TRS for 10 years. You know, and I'm at the coffee pot and he comes over and says, Hey, Greg, I could just. I wanted to describe, I couldn't find everything that you said, and I went, well, thank you, I'm very, very good about it. He said, your delivery sucks. <laughs> you know, like, what your questioning is good. The way you are going about questioning is not good. And I, and I love that he kind of, he's why I started trying to find all this stuff, right? Because it's like, that's right, I was in superintendent mode, not in board mode, right? So I'm, I'm acting like a tactician when my role at TRS was to be in the strategic role. And, and some of it I felt pretty strongly that I felt like the foundation was a little bit as a superintendent for 25 years. I felt like that. It's still, I, I lost it on the way I delivered. If I would have just delivered it better, I could have gotten to a better place. So I was trying to learn. I, I mean, a board president the other day said, you're basically with this last list of questions telling us, don't ask why is it painted red, ask what is the process for determining the name of That was like the best example. Like, as a board member, don't say why is it. It could be the guards are up, the defenses are up. But if you're a board member and you're in a strategic role, you say, what is our, uh, Mr. Superintendent, what is our process for determining the name of In his mind, he's going, that's a really good question. I'm good. That's the thought level of it is it. What he's going to say, because he's the professional that I know he is, is I'll check on it and know if you have private board. Right? And if it doesn't exist, it will exist by the next, you know, board meeting. So as a board member, you got really to the point, right? Like if that process for determining pink color doesn't exist, you've got that out. You know, that you need to work on that process. As opposed to saying, why is that? If you ask why it's negative, we aren't really focused on the process, right? And we're de there is defensive 
you like, we're just kidding. I'm going to ask the board members, just one or two, would be great. When you look at that last set of questions, I'll pause for just a second. I want trustees to look at that number three set of sample questions. This is on the number two. On the second one, thank you. On the second one, the last set of questions. So, like, what question, like, that, that I would have, or that that I would ask, or what? What, what are you? What are you? Either of those. Like, this one jumped out of answer that she was So, like, how do our stakeholders know this service exists? How would we self-rate our marketing efforts? So instead of saying, I don't think we market well enough. You know, Trustee would ask, what is our marketing problem? Right. Correct. Right. Yes. So the question that jumps out to me is, what is the best way the board fit the board town? Okay, see, so that's great. Like you, you feel like but that doesn't have three things. So it's not Greg speaking for the board, but it was Greg kind of saying, how can the board help? So now I just brought the board collectively together, right? And I'm saying, how do we? Help, you know, with this submission. Thank you. That's it. Thank you for sharing that. See another one? Anyone else? What concerns you about this? Yeah, I, that, to me, that's a great question. So I'm a board member and I'm listening to the data report. We'll talk about this here in a little bit. And I have some notions in my mind, but I don't know for sure. If I'm supposed to be happy or sad about the data that I'm hearing, right? So a good question is, what concerns us about these data? You know, because now you're throwing it back to the tactical team. Like, I think I know what's happening, but I want to hear, you know, I want to hear, like, where the rubber is the road, what concerns us about these data? I, that, to me, is a question that can never be wrong. Greg, I like the one, um, what is the vision for this program idea concept, right? Because if staff is presenting something, right, it, it should be more than just, well, we're giving you this because the space right. as we have to okay. now, see, that one gets to a line, because when the scorecard is even part of our school, if we do, then if we can work calibrating to where does this line come up, again, the board wants to help, but we want to see where it lines up. Excellent. Like the one Greg, is this the best measure for success? Because that's the goal. That's right. And yeah. I think that's success. Okay. And that's a wonderful, and I can tell you already, this group is going to be constantly in a very, uh, I, the other day I was with this, we always were on Zoom. You know, see, it's hard to read body language when you're on Zoom. But I, I can get a, there's a number of a wide angle on it. But I said, there's some cognitive dissonance in the room. I sense it right now. And it was a compliment, it didn't feel like it at the time, because they all just kind of looked at me good. Because I think when we start to narrow focus and try to find the best measure, tomorrow, if the board wants some information on any topic, we can throw a hundred slide PowerPoint together in two hours, right? We can come up here in half a day, look into the wall walls. The harder thing to do is what is the best measure that was the cognitive distance. Is that fair to say? It's like, what's the best, the most important thing we do to try to get this done? What's the best way to do it? We're not finished with that at all. Tonight, I sure. liked your version the other day, though, the crystallized. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're going to take the nine slides and yeah, crystallize yeah, them that's good. to the most important. And that's, this really will be a good stopping place. To me, that's the tactical roles responsibility to the strategic role of this university. So that you all don't have to guess what's the most important thing. Now it doesn't mean you sit here and say why. But your, your question is, is that the best yeah, measure? That, is this the best measure right, for success? Very question. So we, you just heard more of board and you, you were just wondering if there's a way to this. So that's a fair way to just 
And then what you're doing is comparing the rationale for why that measure has been chosen. And that might, you might say, oh, okay. why is that good? Or is there another, you know, like, it just doesn't feel like we're directionally aligned with what we're trying to accomplish to that measure. And it may just be, hey, it's board member, uh, this is where I would talk when I got better at TRS. It's board member, I just don't see how that number lines up with that action. So help me understand it. Sometimes I don't think that I was just my assumption. And I mean, I was really asking the question to try to get an answer to the question and say the play in the mind. You know, for all the superintendents out here saying, go get it. You know, it's like, no, I'm a board member. I'm not going to go get it. But that, you know, I, was, I was kind of getting that charge, you know, like, go get it. Just it just doesn't work. Okay. Mr. Superintendent, I kind of teed up the yep. scorecard. Does that, does that sound about right? Yeah. And so, trustees, you should have uh, this document, this balanced scorecard document. Now, you have the first two columns that are completed in your copy. The one you landed on on June 6th in the workshop. The, the four priorities and then the objectives under each priority. For priority one, we came up with four objectives. And then for two, three, and four, came up with just three objectives. And so tonight, here in just a moment, our team is going to present the third column, that, the strategic action, that column. And we left that blank on purpose because we want to present that first and then we're going to give you a copy after we go through it. Because we didn't want you to get ahead. Because like me, you're going to read to the next page while we're still focused on me. I should have said one more thing in way of introduction. I strongly recommend the board not adopt column three. We're going to have that discussion later when the board fully understands that. The board needs to set the direction for the strategic objective. This is my opinion. I'm a strong believer that it is the key strategic action to not need to be adopted. I don't think this is the team that is pivot. I use the most of the word on earth the last time since I'm clear. They need to pivot. I would, I would think you would all would want them to have the agility to pivot and then the board on the pivot not come as for so, the adoption of the strategic plan that takes in. Okay, so when okay, so if we put this like on our website for the public to see. So then if there are changes, a change just is made. Yeah, you, and then I would put draft. So we're just agreeing to. Yeah, I would put board adopted over the first two columns real big. Okay. That's a really good example. And then I would probably say something about the type of tech or side. The yeah, the type of tech or side. is where we can, okay, right? We could do something. We could play with it. And I would put draft at the top of it and never take it off. And put the date of the last revision. But, but I think it's important too. This is our face. I mean, this, this is something that we're going to show the public, all, all the columns, you know. Uh, but again, to break it down by, okay, the board's area and then the tac tactical side of it. But as I was stating earlier, please focus on, I want you to think through the alignment, okay? And, and Greg mentioned that word alignment a minute ago. As we go through, let's just say we start off, Sheila's going to lead us through the 1.1.1.1. One, 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 one. That, that alignment for 1.1.1. One, 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 through 1.1.3, how that dovetails under that 1.1 1 .1 objective. Does that make sense? And if that, if that kind of aligns with your thinking on that performance objective side, okay? So we're gonna go through that. I'll also say this too, next week we have Leadership Day. That's where we're gonna have, you know, all of our leaders come together and we're gonna spend some time, dedicated time to focusing on those progress measures, progress and outcome measures, those last four, columns four or five, where we really get in the weeds on Okay, what, what are our goals and targets and lead and lag measures, right? If you do this correctly on columns four and five, they will change over the next couple If they don't, they're not doing well. Right, if they're about to start killing back tonight, they're going to get a layer back and they're going to go, well, this is the best measure for question argument, right? They're going to say, wait a minute. So that's why I'm saying don't adopt it, because we can make posters that don't fall, that's what you want. But if you really want them to do it back and, and, and keep sharpening and breaking down silos and sharpening, then we have to give some grace on those being updated. Yeah. 
Yeah, so the first thing, Greg, I, I, can you explain your process for choosing such a small font? I just want to make sure that I'm, uh, yeah, I'm finally using my $10 dollar cost of readers. Anyway, I want to make sure I'm understanding what you're right. saying when you're saying column one, two, three, four, because they're not actually never done this mistake. But you're talking about the board adopting the priorities and the performance objectives and only those items that are this is a great question. This is a great question. Because they're not number called. Correct. But everybody, one, two, so one, two, three, four, five, just right up above those columns. So column one are the four priorities. Okay, so the student outcomes, staff outcomes, community outcomes, nine, nine. All of our strategic objectives are in those four buttons. We had agreement that we had a nine. Then each key strategic objective. You can call column two, by the way, whoever writes the dip, uh, seven. If, you, if the language, uh, well, this says performance objective. That's probably more consistent with dip, right? So I may have already done that. I, by definition, that those are strategic objectives. I'm just telling you by definition to call it performance objectives might help other staff members. You know, like, oh, I see the dip in, in that column. The third column, I would kind of put my foot in to the nine. I would recommend key strategic actions. I need operationally to find key is three, just so the trustees know. Right. What are the three most important things we're going to do? We get those three inquiries after key. That's helpful. What are the three most important things we do? It does not mean that everything else is not important that we're working on. It just means that those are the most important. That's the stuff we're really trying to get a lot of energy and resources rallied through. That is column three. And column four is progress measure. And column five is outcome measure. So eventually, back to the original question, thank you again. The board adopted the SCUC column five after about 24 months of us getting, them, getting it right. And I actually asked them. I hold that and team felt good about it, but that's our targets. And the board adopts it. And now we just raise. But don't try to get those finished inside the next 12 months because you're going to pull on this and something else is going to come. This is a better way to measure. Yeah, what that's fair. Do, what yeah. she just asked that you hope this team is going to do that. Does that make sense to make it eventually adopt Colorado? Right? I don't, my recommendation. And so, really, call three and four is where the senior leadership team takes these things, really, that they spotted and pours them in. So, I have to address what our self analysis and other drivers of this. I mean, the DIP, District Improvement Plan, is a compliance document. Is that a fair statement? Okay, so the difference between this and the DIP is we are trying to do this to be aspirational. This is what we aspire to accomplish. The DIP is check the amount of federal dollars. Let's just go. So, can did column two in some ways becomes your executive summary or your table of contents for your DIP? And then when you get these measures lined out, and all you have to do is start plugging in the measures. This does not have the compliance stuff on it, right? Okay, that's fine. Just you probably have software that pre-populates this type. Okay, so it's that easy to do that. This is not the compliance document. This is the aspirational document of the district. That we want to have the board's goals, the superintendent's goals, the same goals, the superintendent's appraisal. Chase five or six sentences. Don't So we'll go ahead and get started with our presentation of this column for the key strategic actions. We'll start with 1.1.1.1. Uh, Sheila's going to lead us through these, these three underneath 1.1 1 .1 academic growth and development. So. Okay. As Dr. Snell stated, we are looking at the really beginning that process for this new school year of making our 
detailed plans around the work that we're about to do. So as we were considering the key strategic actions, uh, three being key, uh, we are thinking of that in terms of what are the things that we know are most critical right now for us to be working on improving. It is not all inclusive of everything that we're doing. On the first item, 1.1.1, complete a comprehensive curriculum management plan that provides a clear direction, detailed systemic and ongoing program and curriculum, development, implementation, assessment, and evaluation. This is pretty wordy, and there is this key action really represents all of our academic content. And it represents how we support teachers in the classroom. And that will all be seen as we continue to develop our progress measures and looking at those outcomes. Part of our leadership day will be where our departments and our teams are really working together around um, our key strategic actions to begin coming up with what their progress measures are. So that then, that is a very large umbrella around a lot of what's happening in the curriculum instruction world. Then on 1.1.2, provide a systemic process to ensure high quality engaging instruction in reading. I pointed out on one that that's kind of comprehensive of academic areas. This one is very specific to reading. Uh, that this is really a little bit of a carry forward in what has been one of our overarching goals because we know we still have work in that area that's an area of improvement. Therefore, it serves as one of our top three academic key strategic actions. And then 1.1.3, provide a systemic process to ensure high quality engaging instruction in mathematics. Call out those two because we know that those are two that we are looking uh, more closely to improve in particular areas. The details around that, by grade, how, action steps, and how we're monitoring it, will come in those progress measures that the rest of our staff, uh, the uh, tactile um, tacticians will do uh, out on the campuses because they've got to be involved in what those action steps are. So that's what we're going to develop as you hear everybody really reporting on the key strategic actions. Those pieces of it apply to all of the key strategic we're, actions we're that we're talking about. We're deploying to the operational level testing and then coming back and tweaking and setting you know, the measures based on that feedback. I like this one now that we have a bunch of, right? The first one, real quick, I'm not going to every one of them. Um, the first one, you can see each of these start with action verbs. And so, see, the first one is complete. So, I could see in the future uh, this being modified to say sustain, right? Like that's going to, because that's telling me it doesn't exist. So we're building it. And we're going to implement and sustain a comprehensive curriculum, right? Does that make sense? That's why the board would adopt that, because that's going to change once that happens. Exactly. Yes. So we've really already gathered some information around and we have ideas around what those progress measures, but it is critically important that those that are implementing that on the campuses and the district staff that's supporting that be a part uh, as we move forward to those action, actual action steps. You, what you're going to hear as we continue the first priority uh, being having four components to it, um, I have hit on the academic growth and development, and the next three will continue really in that overarching part of uh, the student achievement and post-secondary preparedness. So we're really moving forward in the layers that you've already created, which is we have a priority, and we have four performance objectives within that first priority. And now we will talk about college. Career and military readiness. Dr. Wright. Yes. So, one of the things to note about this is that we wanted to be very targeted in our priorities, and so we did uh, appreciate the board putting together college and/or career and/or military readiness because that uh, that allows us to prioritize um, what the needs of our district are and our students are, and so. Uh, for 1.21, we want to increase the number of students who demonstrate college readiness as evidenced by the TSIA 
SAT, ACT, AP scores and dual credit completion. So looking at those numbers might be an example of a progress measure. Um, increasing the number of students who demonstrate workforce readiness by looking at uh, the number of CTE programs that we offer, perhaps, or giving, uh, we're looking at the number of completed certificates. Establishing a CCMR task force, which allows us to involve community members into speaking into each one of these components of college, career, and military readiness. And then finally, to continue to provide campus opportunities to work with our local recruiting entities. Uh, and that might look like perhaps having them come on call, making sure they're coming on college days on the same days that you know, college visits, perhaps that would be a progress measure that we ensure that we have recruiters there as well. Continuing in, we're still in that academic priority one. Uh, safety and well-being are committed. And I know everyone is the interim executive director for curriculum instruction. So it's happy to be here. And so the 1.3 is safety and well-being, and we kind of divided that into three key areas. One of those you can see is to sustain and evaluate systems of support to mitigate vulnerabilities and increase preparedness for emergencies and school safety. So the first one really is centered around that physical safety mostly and emergency operations and plans. Um, 1.32 is provide a systematic district-wide multi-tiered system of support to include social and behavioral support. We already have these in place, but it's just making sure we're continuing to implement an effective system that does have that make a difference for our students. And then 1.33 is foster a culture of engagement among students. So that really more is about the, the culture and making sure students are in attendance. We need them to attend. So the 1.33 kind of quite had a conversation with them. And I've heard you several times that you're going to the teams to talk to them, but we still don't push them into it. So I heard you say attendance, so that might be a measure for one. That's, right. Yes, that's, I was trying to give an example of context because yeah. what does that mean in culture of engagement? I was just trying to give an example that yeah. our principals and leaders of the team might come up as progress measure. What sort of lets for the board, like one, one other, like how else might we measure engagement? As a oh, quality cup. Uh, so, what did you call the, the quality cup? Okay. It's our version of the Lone Star oh, Cup. Okay, probably, that's a, yeah, that, that's a so if you already have that established and making that connection from the quality cut, now that might be an outcome measure for one three three, not an output measure. If that makes sense, right? Like that's the big thing out at the end. Maybe your attendance rate because school became optional with the pandemic. On part of our component with our quality cup is actually just simple participation, right? So it's not just the number of points. That you know each campus may have gotten, but it's also just the sheer number of students that are involved. And you know, talk about expanding the different things that count under that um, to show students. So, there's you probably have you know, any number of uh, data points you know, to point to. So, the challenge is going to be which one is the best one to say, oh, man, what's the best one? Your question. Your question. Oh, yeah, that's the <laughs> That's, that's, that's what they're working on right now. Y'all are actually going to the teams to say what's the best measure for success. For success, of course, that's getting that. Okay, thank you. That's awesome. All right, and then the fourth performance objective under student achievement and post secondary preparedness is student involvement. And Dr. McMullen's the one to update us on those. I apologize. Everything we just talked about, like, it's better here. My apologies. Well, <laughs> okay, right. well, 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 I was just going to say, but I was going to redirect. I want to talk through that, how do we delineate between kind of what we just talked about. If you do it, it'll be in the budget. Yeah. The column for measures. That'll clarify. Yeah. So whatever the measures are for that one, three, three will be different than what we're looking at in one, that's four. What, yeah, that's, that's what we have on the side. I want to make sure y'all knew I was listening as a test. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, my hope for staff would certainly be that um, if our goal is, hey, kids come to school, I mean, that's pretty basic. And even just looking at some of the things that, you know, listed on here, these 
case did not seem to be face caps, aspirations, fire scene, confusion team, which, I mean, uh, this, this was really, really great to see. I, I love having this. It's a great insight into you know, what senior leadership is thinking about. So, you know, and it, it's kind of throughout this document on both sides, right? Yeah, part of it, so, you know, we talked about it in 10 minutes, and the 10 minutes is really important, but it is kind of in some ways. It's always, historically, it's just been like a baseline data set. They got, let it got a little more amplified during the pandemic. Like, they're not going to, you know, like, they're wearing their enrolled, but school is optional. So that, that moved it up the food chain a little bit. But the beauty of this, it's like if attendance appears in the areas of the column four data, they may have column five to say the attendance is how we're checking it along the way. Big thing we're trying to move at the end is black participation rates or the quality cut or what. But we're checking attendance along the way to see if it's working. And it could be student perception, especially in this. Do the student athletes or the student participants perceive that this is working well enough? So I'm all in your space. <laughs> Okay, so I have 1.4 student involvement, and the three uh, key strategic actions we have were 1.4.1 enhance opportunities for all students to engage in extracurricular scholastic experiences, and then the, uh, the next two were implement a systemic protocol to recruit and retain student participation in the district athletic program, and then the fine arts program. Uh, and I think, as you said, the, the only cup uh, is one of the key progress measures that so, so where would just off the top of my head looking at these things um where would something like DECA fit in this where would destination imagination fit in this where would um, the CDEs and the LDEs fit into this so, so part, okay. part of that yeah. will be drilling down in so I think you gave some examples that are definitely going to show up in number one on scholastic Experiences, but if we go back to 1.3, we would also see as part of that engagement. So it's really differentiating between sometimes participation in activities out, opportunities outside the classroom are engaging, or they may be classified in more of the involvement arena, which is kind of scholastic, athletic, and arts. What does so, so on the what for one of the so What is that extracurricular conference the last thing for our week's talk about UIS? Well, the intention of that is there are things outside of what assignment is due in this class. And for some of our students, that's where they excel, is being involved in the organization. So I, really our intention was it's scholastic experiences are also extracurricular and in sometimes the same way athletic and fine arts so, are. So that question is co-curricular, helpful, helpful to that one for one to that was a really good strategic question. And so I think co-curricular, maybe, if I read it, I thought that was good. Extra and co Well, so I wonder if it's extra and co because that makes it that good. Those things that don't fit into a nice UIL box. Right. Well, and again, well, our prior um, performance objective, that student engagement, we also know that some of that's going to be captured in that one as well. The one that we talked about is in this one. Uh, yeah. Did I get correct? I think we're not sure. <laughs> or, I guess this is one will be I saw them taking notes. I have a co for my view. That's and Said board members that ask about the language, right? Have the boards have been on the language on the if you want to well, look, but I, I want their input because what that makes me think is right. You know, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about COVID curriculum. I like that because to me, that also encompasses our entire elementary care. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that because in order for us to have extracurricular athletics or fine arts work, we've got to build it from the base, and that's where that's where we get it. Right? Yeah, so. We need to have a solid pipeline there, you know, there, there, K, K5. So I think whatever we can do to include 
that that focus we we have to. Yeah, so like it's really that's really important to keep you one hundred percent well adopt how to the superintendent tactics we're asking you for input on column three is that from your strategic plans to make sure before you deploy it to the operational role and test it, right? Y'all gotta test it and bring that back to the board and I get a chance to look at the Well see, and another thing too, you talk about the language, I think it's important for our trustees because they're having conversations a lot every day with, with their with our community, stakeholders, whomever both internal and external, I think it's important for us both to, to have a, a really aligned understanding of this work. Even though, you know, you guys are the governance piece or that strategic piece, you still need to understand the tactical side of it. And we have to understand a little bit your thinking on that overarching strategic side. So, that word is probably the word miscommunication. So, you know, like the meaning of a word. So, we, it, it creates confusion and it can damage trust. You know, and, and if someone's upset, somewhere you said, we never talk about whatever well, I just said, that, well, that's not what I understood. So we're missing as much about common language as anything. Okay. All right. We Good are ready for priority, for priority two.
that it will become certified. It's the entire, either five or six of those for this upcoming school year. They were paraprofessionals last year, they're now certified. And so we're going to continue down that path and grow that. We've got priority one, priority two, and three, especially the the how do you measure it along the way, and how do you measure it at the end? It's more qualitative instead of quantitative, right? And I just saw you said, but we're going to figure out a method. That's what y'all. Okay, trust me. Like that's what needs to happen. It's like that feels like okay, strategic to expand the relationship. Okay, how do we measure the relationship? So, but. Which treasure you should measure. And there is a measure if you will if you will work. I see something like this inviting the DBU uh, people who uh, teach those courses to come out and have to an event that we're having, and, and we would strategically measure that relationship based on whether or not, first of all, did they come? That's, and, a, that's a good day, the first day of the Right, did they come? And then, you know, maybe communication afterwards about interest in our districts. That's exactly right. I was thinking of a follow-up survey, and then you do it every single time, and you start tracking that. <clears throat> you get 10 questions or less, you data about this relationship. At the end, your outcome measure is you either go fully staffed or you aren't fully staffed. Right? Like, if you get to that big outcome measure, I would assume you want one, two, so that is your outcome measure would be being staffed, right? Being staffed, and also I think another outcome measure I would like to put on there might be at the last minute, like we need a base teacher at Collinville and at Grapevine High School. So who can I call? Which one of those can I call? Gotcha. Will they come through for yeah. me? Yeah. That's more be, about that relationship. Okay. We might not always pass that because they either have somebody or they don't. But Everything we're talking about right now, all to say trustees will fall in either column four or column five and move forward. That's the bottom. Like it's gonna that data is gonna shake out and one column put together will be important. So this year on employee retention and employee satisfaction, I see columns four and five being pretty robust because these are uh, these are very comprehensive things. So we're gonna continue each year to do a pay system review of all salaries. So we know what's happening around us and where we need to make improvements because as the market changes, we need to also see change. Uh, number two, uh, provide employees with ongoing coaching and professional development, continuously improve teaching practices, uh, focusing on that employee's professional growth. So we will be working with the CNI team, with the academic side to not only just uh, evaluate where they are, but grow them. And so that would probably be something that I won't measure as a you know as an HR department, but we'll work with what does professional development look like and how how deep does that go for each employee. But one one thing real quick, you notice know, this is still the same provide teachers, provide employees. And this this focuses on our instructional staff but also to our earlier employees. You know, our substitutes, uh, those paraprofessionals. Um, so this, this is overarching. And as I was reading that one, Brad, earlier today, getting ready for today, I, I might want to reword 2.2.2 because it, while it starts off providing employees with ongoing coaching, it's narrow, it does get narrow. Go and yeah. I want to make sure that when people do see this, you know, everybody is interested in professional development. If you're a bus monitor, you want to know how to be a better bus monitor. If you are a cafeteria worker, you want to know how to be more efficient. So we want everybody to know, you can come and work for us. We care about your professional growth, and we want to... This, this is capacity building you know, for everyone, is what I'm hearing, right? Yes. It's just yes. You know, a custodian, a teacher, a practical, it's capacity. If you have the tools and resources to do the job. I, I love what you're saying, because you're saying the employee at the front of it got inconsistent with the real teacher kind of like So we'll, we'll reword that a little bit. Uh, uh, build authentic relationships with our staff, teachers, and administrators by seeking their input related to work engagement. Uh, and that, that ties in really to 2.2.2. Uh, but we will continue to give our engagement survey. We do use Gallup employee engagement survey. Uh, 
you know, changes over time. But it really, like you just said, uh, do I have the materials to do my job? That went down this year. And so we need to do that line. Because at the end of them, we should be able to give people the tools they need to do. Perfect. Okay, so then we, we got a data set that we don't fully understand. Now we're going to form a teacher advisory, ad hoc teacher advisory group, or maybe a standing teacher advisory group. Talk about that. And then we're going to go probe and say, help us as the tactical team try to figure out why they went down. And we probe with another focus group. And we translate it listening into actionable information moving forward. Instead of just going, oh, interesting. Our trend line went, like, no, we're going to stop for a moment. We're going to go try to figure out what that thing is. Gallup would tell you that two things. It's better to not do a survey. The king of selling surveys would tell you to not do a survey than to do a survey and not share the results. So this year, the Gallup came out, they gave us more feedback. We've been using it for a while. Um, but they really provided more detailed information to us than they have in the past. And so our principals do, uh, I think Gallup can present to our principals, that they are more equipped to present that to their staff to see the feedback. I would say you probably, probably you might have crystallized to use that word. That, that would be the tool set for the rentals that take all of this and then crystallize it into the three or four most important points. So, I have a question. If, if they are adopting this tonight, then I want to change up the wording of 2.2.2. Well, okay, so now they are adopting it. Oh, they're just adopting one and two. Yeah, that's correct. Cool. Right. But now we're just talking three. Right. But you just talked about the rentals. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm going to say that it's not the So basically the things that you're both, I think. And that's why I'm wondering if you want both of the 
Let's make sure we do. Words call because we're already we measuring engagement's kind of the harder one to measure in a lot of satisfaction is the simple one. You know, that do I have the tools and resources I need to do the job? You know, I'm paid the relatively uh, comparable uh, salary engagement. Can my true said engagement is raving fans, it's not just fans. Like our, we have a staff member who's a fan. Yeah, engagement is a teacher is bragging about their campus at church on Sunday in downtown Fort Worth, and everyone's going to shut up. You know, and we don't want to hear about how great your school is. You know, that's a great, that's a good. Maybe the, the 2.2.2 I see as being the most questions that you, or the topics that you brought up, um, as we look for engaged teachers in certain areas, uh, that's going to be, that, those employees will have that in their professional growth, and we'll identify that. Um, but just as you were, as you were talking, I uh, just think what you were saying aligns to the next columns of that. Well, and I think too, going back to that, you know, that one point three foster culture of getting them to the students that will be peace. I mean, it's, I think, organically, we have to go through some of this to figure, to, to stuff's going to rise up. And, well, yeah, I, I think, though, it was kind of key more towards the, this employee retention and, and satisfaction piece, right? Like, we just kind of forgot to include the satisfaction on this other side. Yeah, I was, I, I, Jim, there could be an exception. Satisfaction and engagement go together yeah. almost every time. And it could even be like satisfaction slash engagement. Like you're almost always trying to look at both of those things. Just generally speaking, you could present a case to me that there's an exception to that. I want to try that. And I might accept it, but I think usually it goes with You know, right? when you're talking about employees and their satisfaction and engagement, that's kind of like just we want them here, we want them happy, we want them doing the work that they're supposed to be doing. And so the terms of satisfaction and engagement are so, Gallup has trained my brain on what engagement means and how it differs from satisfaction. Because um, you could have someone happy doing the work. You have to be satisfied to be engaged. You do. But you don't have to be engaged to be satisfied. Like you could be satisfied but not engaged. Yes, for sure. You can't be Right. So that's why I think you try to look at both of them. We're going to add both words yeah. and we're going to build it up. Some people are satisfied to not be engaged. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
dissatisfaction with the engagement. So we can have parents who are satisfied but not engaged. I no. We just say that I, I think I would do There's actually yeah. engagement pieces, right, that we have to do for accountability. Um, I, I think that earlier conversation with satisfaction slash engagement, not everywhere one of here, I think that's just the safest way to say we're looking at both. We're looking at each of these categories. Uh, and we want to make sure that the survey that we implement and, and to get that baseline data measures both those things, not in either or, right, yeah. for sure. So on 311, just a little nuance here to measure satisfaction. And that is super done, but just to be clear, for and parents and families. Okay. We have satisfaction slash engagement for parents and families. Is that what we're saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, see, that's just a great program here. I'm going to be playing my speaker. I'm going to check with me more, but I'm pretty sure I think that's. Okay, then the second one you're transferring to student. Yes, um, and this is where the thought process come from that, uh, came from that, is that when students are engaged, families and parents are engaged. And so the best way to get them more involved and engaged with us is to increase that student engagement. You're going to see some crossover there with some things that I know that we talked about, like on the academic side. Um, those all kind of work together, and as we get into college four and five, we're going to see where does that fit better. But that is where you can see, again, my point of priority three, yeah, things well, that everyone working yes, together. Because we're saying parents and families get engaged because students engage. I love that. And that, it's going to be up there at one. We know it's going to be pieces of your mm -hmm. one, three, or one, four, or both. Mm -hmm. But then to draw a parallel to how we can get the parents. Right, and my team's um, progress measures are going to look a little bit different from there. They're all going to support each other. Um, and then 3.1.3, we want to evaluate and implement district level committees to maximize communication opportunities. So we could both evaluate and implement because we do have a number of district level committees. It's always a good process to evaluate those, um, how they are helping us reach our success and look at if any tweaks need to be made as we get into year two and three and four of this plan. But then also look for where are our holes? Who are we? missing that we could maybe bring in and, and as things change and we've come out of post-pandemic and things look different um, and, and, and school has morphed over the years, do our, the, are the committees we have in place still serving their purpose and helping us measure the su success that we need to? Um, so that's why evaluate and implement is both in that. So. And again, three key. Yeah. We, could, we could have a laundry list here. Yeah. This is hard. <laughs> I'm going to pass it over to Lisa. Everything oh, is important in organization. Yeah. I think it's important. And that, that's okay. what's so difficult about this. And this is down, and so to y'all's points, yes, those are all great ideas. And going back to this inventory here, but it's hard to, to scale this down. You know? And don't, someone may you know, what about, okay, we're still doing that. We're just saying directionally, these are the things that we're going to keep right in front of our mind as a senior. Other stuff is not unimportant, it's just not as important as this. Lisa, the next one. So, objective 3.2 community engagement and partnerships. We also want to make sure that we're including um, community um, non parent um, members, community um, individuals who live within a GCISD, people who work with the GCISD. Um, we want to make sure that they're engaged with the district as well. Um, so for 3.1, we want to develop a uh, district release statement. So in addition to um, including parents um, of students um, at the district, we also want to include some of those community partnerships, um, people who live um, in, in Grapevine, Hollyville, that don't necessarily have students here, or people who work here. So we want to make sure that those release statements are um, representative of um, everything. You guys remember, I think, on the June 6th, we had the belief statements kind of outlined. And so one of the things as a, as a leadership team we kind of discussed, we feel like it would be good to take the time for us to, to organically go out to the community and figure out what our belief statements are. And so so kind of put, put what we had kind of on pause or hold, but let's go out and take some time to truly develop belief statements that align with our community, with the district, and all the things. 
So that's what that's what we're kind of proposing here on this 3.2.1. And, and so that's something that we may want to touch on. I just, you know, take a pulse and see how you feel about that. But that's what that's what that's what we're, we're kind of saying there. You know? So you know we have we have the, the vision and the mission, and then we have obviously the, the first two columns that, that we landed on on June 6th. But we also at that time we had a, a, a list of our group of those belief statements. But what we're asking you're kind of recommending is that we kind of pull out from that a minute and just spend some time and organically finding out what those true belief statements are. So one, you know, everybody has at once, but one exercise could be part of that if you have the tactical SWAT district and it's also the threat the board, you could do a community component of that. And then in your first year of implementation of the scorecard, you're checking like, is our fault right as we're designing out a lot of this and we do a value them. So that's just that's just it's kind of hard, make yourself vulnerable and go straight out to the public and say, what are my weaknesses? You know, like that's tough. But the best way to improve is <coughs> well, admit that you need to improve and then go listen to things we serve. Shocking and actually distracting. The uh, I think the this, this next year in Texas, around seventy percent of the taxpayers in Texas do not have school age children. I'm gonna say, yeah. I mean that falls I just thought of this when I, you know, when we were up there discussing the priest for and many opportunities, and maybe that's that's a committee. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I just that's thought that. Right. We also felt that when you when you're involved in processes like this, you it, it just speaks to so you're now a partner in GCISD. You um, the more so buy-in you have, the one hundred percent is ownership, right? Yeah. I have a long here, I live here, I'm a taxpayer here because hey. I had input on this, and I right. and I went out and I talked to them, you know, because I'm representative of kind of like this demographic of GCIC, and I would talk to my friends, and then brought that back to the table, and it's a whole process, and I, I think that that shows uh, the, the the listening and again community engagement right there, um, and then they become a partner. So that that is kind of where when we started to peel back the onion, I think that that's where that came from. And then for 3.2.2, increased community involvement and presentations from district leadership. So Dr. Schnauz is in the community um, presenting and talking to a lot of people, but are there other opportunities for um, other senior leaders um, on his team to present and partner with um, other groups out uh, within the community? And so that's um, that's an area that we would like to um, delve into and kind of um, investigate and look at getting some some other opportunities for district leadership to be out with any of the community partnerships. I will say that, you know, I'll just give kudos to Kyle for his team. Oh, you were going to say that? Yeah, yeah. so my Kyle so, needs to go to Robert. Yeah, so Kyle is taking it. Kyle. They, they've taken their road show out and, and received a lot of praise on that. And I guess I think we've talked about this as a team. And I think we want to get our resources together, like on the CNI side, doing the same thing on that and helping our community understand. That, that CNI piece. Or what, are, what, what is what is our district curriculum? What does that look like? What does a curriculum management plan look like? What, what does that mean? You know, what does what our academic data that, that we review? You know, STAR is not everything, but it's it's, it's one measure that, that we look at and consider. We also have our other accountability uh, assessments. You know, that, that we look at. And so helping our community understand kind of each area of our work. Uh, that's that's where I think we I think we can do a better job. I know we can. I know we can do a better job with that. That's going to be so important as we talk about the return to the board, tax increases, and then for um, Action 3.2.3, enhanced media relations uh, programs and partnerships. Um, of course, we have uh, working relationships with our local media uh, partners, and um, so just working with um, them to provide consistent community.
communication about what's going on in the district, what are the big things that are happening uh, within our um, school district and within the community, um, just providing regular updates about what's going on. Hi, take us through your All right, our 2.3 is our corporate and business based partnerships. I think we all know um, getting involvement from corporations and businesses, not only in our community, but you know, around the state or the country, is a very important aspect of our students and things that will be successful. So we look at 3.3.1, we get developing a partnership between our CTE program, the leadership of teachers, with local chambers of commerce, and other community organizations. You know, getting shoulder to shoulder with these groups. So we're here at the polls of what the chamber and these companies are doing, needing, helping us develop those relationships, being part of the conversations. Uh, I think it's very important, and that's what we're going to strive to start building that, that outreach that bridge that connection in the different community. As we look at 3.3.2, it's establishing an advisory board um, composed of business leaders, you know, so that we truly know what is our community, what is the business community and environment needing for us to work on and develop and are we working towards the right paths and the career development workforce what our community needs and strives and having to work on those partnerships to help build those together. We've done some of this stuff already with some programs that would work with our kids and technology and have them working with businesses here from computer repair and other things to help build those needs. And then as we look at 3.3.3 it's strengthening our grant scholarship opportunities, increasing the involvement with the Education Foundation. You know, as we expand and build partnerships within our community and corporations, there will become that natural progression for ways for those corporations to provide back and other things. So it's building that relationship back into the foundation that is then going to have that impacts on our students through scholarships or other partnership things that we can do naturally. But we have to begin by developing those relationships instead of it's not going to be more asking for money. Foundation, we're going to build a relationship with them to see value back and forth, and then that will actually progress for us in all areas and really help our foundation, which in turn helps all of us and our students and community grow in that area. So, so Kyle, some of that the vision on 3.3.2, that's, you know, we're not going to confine that just to the boundaries of GCSD, right? No. Like, I can imagine you partnering with Fidelity and Schwab, and kids already getting a financial certificate before they graduate, or BNSF, or yes. Fidelity. Okay. Yeah, okay. much wider than our community. Okay. We try to have a global establishment of leaders. You know, we have strong involvements from the Ellis and the other right. no, bringing folks in our, our space here to really expand, because we're preparing our kids for a global there. economy. Exactly. It's not just within our families here. But we have a wealth of those companies, of like global international companies right here in our backyard space. Very wealthy resource for us to have. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I would say that's not just 3.3.2. Yeah, really, beyond GCIC boundaries for pretty much all of those. Um, because there yeah. are people from outside the district that, that again, grant scholarship opportunities. Um, I think y'all really hit the on untapped resources. Yes. Particularly with, with this need as, as corporations look more towards um, recruiting and creating uh, certifications of positions that don't necessarily require a full-on four-year bachelor's yeah. degree or there's a marriage of, hey, we're going to two years of college and then on top of that, I, I think more universities are going to be moving towards your grant credit for, like, you could come out of Great Mountain or, or College of Heritage High School with a lot of AP and or dual credit and a certificate, and you could essentially already be a, a sophomore or junior in college, Fidelity picks you up and you finish out your two years, but they've already got somebody that's trained with a financial certificate to, to be able to jump right into the employment. And there's a lot of opportunities. You see a lot of examples, say like American Airlines, for example, you know, they teach the American way as far as their culture, right. where you see districts be able to incorporate that into classes. And some kids that are students have already gone through like the first step of somewhat onboarding this cultural experience. And then when they go to apply the company sees that these students have already kind of achieved oh, gosh. through this form. And to be able to pick and somebody that's up that's now already this company. So that's yeah, what we're looking to achieve all this year. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 
transparency so that the budget and the audit and just the way we operate so that our board, our community, all can see uh, that it's there. We want to be fully transparent. I love the idea of, uh, of in the former district that I was at, uh, a board member was getting questions of me, just kept saying, well, go out to the website and look at it. You know? And that's just, that information is out there. You want it to be out there and transparent. So. There was, I saw somebody ask a question today, of, why haven't I heard from my teacher yet about, you know, what assignment, my, my, what classroom my kid would be assigned to as an elementary parent. And, um, and a number of people almost immediately turned in because they're not on contract yet, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's some of that kind of budget transparency. You know, oh my gosh, what about the copying at the elementary middle high school, right? Um, you know, or, oh my word, I see the sprinklers going, who's paying for that? I mean, some of this stuff is really simple, but, you know, people certainly have great questions to ask and deserve to be able to find an answer about that, right? Of course, the big one is, you know, well, how does, you know, the principal pay for, you know, football? How does the principal pay for, you know, decimation imagination? And how does the principal pay for, and of course, we, who are, you know, in this all the time, know a lot of those answers, and it's not always maybe the answer that the community thought that it was, um, or that the parents thought that it was, and, you know, they need to be really transparent on that kind of stuff. Even when the answer is sometimes, well, the school district doesn't pay for that. that that's the answer to the question, if it's okay to say that. Part of that is probably just educating. Did you give up one of yours to one of the other? Well, I would like
it's going to be a process, not a product. I think quality, yeah, I'm not saying do it, but consider it. Well, what I So when you look at this one, we're talking about a process for key responsibilities in determining internal customer satisfaction. You're like me, I said, what, what is this saying to me? What does this mean? Uh, there you can, and the part that I'm really addressing here is the efficiency. He's kind of talked about the effectiveness in, in where he began, and now we're talking about efficient. Uh, because while we've done some of it, we, we feel like that we still need to systematically you, um, really where we are. Do we have the right people in the right seats? Do we have enough people? Do we have too many people? Also getting at efficiency but effectiveness because if you don't have enough people, you're not going to be very effective either. And so it's finding that balance. And part of that is done through talking to the people who are actually fulfilling the roles. Not only are they in the right place, uh, but are those key responsibilities aligned throughout the organization? So this is one that we really are really at the, the beginning of and will affect the entire organization. You talk about crossover in all areas. This is something that is, is just about the entire organization for that overall improvement and calibration, right? So that we have, don't have too many, we don't have too little. We can be both efficient with the resources that we have and effective in, in delivering what it is that our customers, our clients, our families, parents, and students want. Yes. So in some ways, the internal customer on key work right here is staff, yes. right? And so then there's this link between 422 and 2 something, right? Because that satisfaction and engagement being impacted by, I ordered something, I needed almost a piece of chalk. That's how old I am, but whatever, but I ordered it. I got here in a timely fashion. That's that draw present and satisfaction. So mechanisms, we're gonna love what you're saying. We put it on there, or you believe it's the right thing to put on there, we're gonna figure out how to make it happen. That's what I think I just heard, right? Yes, sir. Okay. One other great example is kind of the video that you did with me the other day, right? Every year, and I don't think our community realizes every year we monitor the, the bus routes to see how to tweak. We don't just run the same route every year for every school because kids grow up and you don't need to stop on that street anymore. Or people move in and, oh my gosh, now I need another route because I've got this, this neighborhood with suddenly a lot more bus right. So that's There might be a reason that two buses cross each other on the road. Yeah, yeah. 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 People think that's that yeah. is wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's the elementary bus, and that's the middle school bus, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then uh, 4.3 is long range facility management plan. And, and you know, some of the things that we've already done as far as that's concerned, and yet we're still really in that assessment or evaluation process because of the way that we're going about it, which includes the community. So it gets back at priority three, right? It is about transparency also earlier in the floor. It kind of touches on all of those things. It's a systemic review of all of these areas, which touch on everything. How are your facilities performing for you? Where are your technology needs? Where are you aspirationally? Where are you going with that? Just the basics of equipment. We talk about satisfaction with our employees. Do they have the tools that they need? That's, that's a very real part of that. Um, when you're looking at the needs of campuses and departments. So it's that holistic view of all of those things, not just done by the district, not just done by a third party, but then evaluated by the community. First, the Long Range Planning Committee, and as you know, the next step is the Bond Advisory Committee. So again, kind of incorporating all of the areas into that part of the process. And a big piece of it is 4.3.2, right? Evaluate the financial capacity to support a facility management plan, both in the near term and in the long term. And I think maybe one of the things that's been misunderstood is, well, what was the district's long-range plan? Uh, because we are so dependent on bond programs as, as compared to just having a capital program that comes out of the operating budget. So that goes back to just communication and education as we continue to do that as part of our financial stewardship, really painting that picture, the whole picture on both sides of the tax equation 
about where we are as a district financially and why we have to go about certain things the way that we do in order to be able to provide the support that we need in all areas of our district, not just in our buildings. This, those lean measures for those will be really a robust and critical conversation over the next six months, right? Like what, what are we going to spend in common for is the lead measures for those? I think those six, uh, I'm sorry, uh, eight, uh, six will be a lot better understood once we, how are we, how are we measuring that long way? You know, like, and that's, I appreciate the fact that well, you said we're going to figure that out. You know, that's the right thing, we're going to figure that out. Well, part of it will be the measure that we're saying before we to look at. I, first of all, I want to thank each of you for all the work that you've done with us today. I'm so excited that I want everyone to run through a brick wall, which is why we probably need to have like a hype video. <laughs> you know, but we, we can hype up our whole school here. <laughs> but anyway, I just, I, I really am so excited about this. It just, I don't know, it, this is going to be great. And I, I hope that y'all are excited <laughs> because it, I mean, this is, I don't know, it, this, is, this is very cool. So. That is a weird, like I stopped a couple of weeks ago and just said, okay, uh, let's go. I leaned like, over to the other yeah. guy and said, okay, that's not as good a start. And is it fair for me to say, this is the start, right? Because you just like every single time, every time you all do a little bit of work, the way it, there's better work for that, you know? And that just, that's continuous and free. That's why I appreciate this, the thoughtfulness. Like, yeah, there's a it. lot of thought. <laughs> work so well together. We are very lucky to be in this room today. So thank you. Well, hard. It's, it's really cool. Well, I just want to thank the board. I want to thank our team and the board for coming together like this. Uh, I think it's powerful that we can sit in a room together and talk about work and talk about the kind of direction that we're establishing, but also where we've been in that vision. Uh, in, in June and July are crazy. It's crazy for everybody, right? Because you have all the planes and stuff that you're trying to do with your families. And we're, we're in and out too, but it, it seemed like I know it was what, it June 6th was our workshop, and it just seemed like that was like yesterday, even though there's you know, it's over a month or whatever. But uh, there was a lot of work that happened uh, conversations, meetings, all the things, despite those crazy schedules, and our team stepped up. So thank you guys, thank you to the board for the feedback. This is a really good night for us, this, this first half. So thank you. And Dr. Chance, I just wanted to, I will pass this out. I apologize for the small print. Yeah, the I will also, it is. But I will say, so as we continue to build this out and we do ever bring in printed versions, then we'll now go on to, we're going to need like legal paper and we'll increase that. So um, again, work in progress. We can also send the slides. Um, so I will attach the slide deck and this PDF in the board update, but I'll send you home with paper copy in that too. I, I, it's interesting what you said about legal paper. That's pretty common. Yes. <laughs> one, one little nuance to that is we're establishing yeah. this. Oh. Thank you for saying that. As the 23 through 27. We talked about 24 through 28. Yeah, that's what I was going to think. Yeah. I want to make sure I think that nice. you're really launching it in the 23 24 academic year. It's almost like we're getting calibrated to the baseline. Baseline year, so then 24, 25, 25, 26, 26, 27, 27, 28 for that four year plan. And I would make it 20 days. Okay. That would be my recommendation. Let it be a five year, with okay. year one being okay. the, the, like, let's figure it out. You know, because truthfully, it is kind of form a lot of your back to school stuff for this year because it's underway. Right? You are going to use it as almost a list. If this is all solidly in place by December of 23 or January 24, that helps you with all your back school stuff, right? Because you've got a clear run. So are, are we going to start this in September? So yeah, yeah, what I'd like to do is bring it to you guys soon and get you guys to right. approve that. Uh, so we're going to do that August 7th. Okay. And then, um, but our first report card, would you start in September? We, we, yeah, we can attempt to start. Like Presenting out well, right? What you what, what they're probably well, I don't recommend to the team be 
is this fall report is clarity around those lead measures. Why we get to, where did we get the feedback and what group? Is it, was it was that a workshop or is that, that a
Okay, so um, we're now to uh, board operating procedures, uh, board policies, board goals. None of this stuff. We're going to just talk about these things. Apparently, we're going to need to find another date. So at the end, um, it might be August 14th, but whatever. But we need to find another date because at that um, meeting, we're going to adopt uh, the, the scorecard. We're going to adopt our scorecard. We're going to adopt it's all the things we're talking about today. So, um,
I don't want to do that again in six months. Then, maybe after you do those two cycles, you can maybe say, okay, now you all want to do it a year from now. Right? But I think to have shorter cycles by the front is good. So look, I know you're okay. The bottom of you don't look at that. I'm going, oh my gosh, that's all orange. It's okay. I go, wait, say, say again which one's January. 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 June. So you took it in June. So you're going June, January, June. On your first three yeah. cycles, basically. Right. Then you can decide, do we want to go to annual after that? Right. Is that fair? Yeah. Like said, okay. So if you look at 1.1, 1, 1.2, 1, 1. 1.3, Read those real quickly and then 2.1, 2.2, Just scan them, not the results necessarily, but just the questions. Now, I'll give you 30 seconds. Okay, so now that you all well, we just spent two hours talking about this, now that you know more about this, See how one 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 two one three two one two 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 three start going yellow just by implementing. And I was at a board the other night, and a trustee with a straight face said, "You take the word regularly out of this thing, it all be green." You know, which, yeah, it's like kind of the morning, you know, and doing it one time in the 1980s. It's not all about you know that we got it done. So in the regular, so the scorecard reporting, the constant review and recalibration to the mission of vision. Now we're talking about setting beliefs. That fits all into this. Okay, does that make sense? So you don't be disheartened by looking at this one. The first one and the second one are about to, you know, the works. Then moving forward, part of the reason is the board operating guidelines and things like that. Look at four. I mean, the five. That's really about board procedures and board operating guidelines. You already wanted to have that conversation anyway, right? You just kind of tell right into this. The fourth category on here is about advocacy. <coughs> you know, I'm sure this board, our trustees of y'all talking to the capital, you know, on days and things like that, right? That's advocacy, right? That's statewide advocacy. Do you have a local, I saw chambers, plural a while ago? Do you have an advocacy plan for the boards that it can be present at different city councils, different chamber? Or do you just put it up to it like I'm, I'm on that so I'll go? Or, or you could chart it and you make sure, remember Shirt, Civil Love, Universal City, we also had St. Kitts, we had Selma, Converse, everyone had a different chamber. You know, they're like, we want to be really involved. Here's where I'm the superintendent. We have eight municipalities. We want, you know, we want to make sure you're at all of them. I'm like, okay. All right, three years in high school. I'm going to need some help. And out of necessity, we built a team of vague advocacy plan for every month. At the end of the board meeting, we had those all listed, like the 15 places we needed to be present. And I would say, I can go, or no, oh, I'm gone. I'm at the TRS board meeting. And this trustee said, I'll go. And then I'll go. And we had every chamber covered for the next 60 days. Well, we have a liaison program. Maybe we need to extend it out into the community more. That's what, that's all this is, this, this systematic. And, yeah. And just like, so it's covered. So it's covered. That's exactly right. And presence yeah. and things like that. It doesn't mean good speech. It just I mean, means being present. Right? Right? Yeah, but I think you guys, you did have that probably get to the community yeah. on the city where the big, big chamber, bigger river, or whatever it may be. Like the yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. So that's so basically what it is, but it's beyond the campus, right? This 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 morphed out of this process, but you know how we have priority one, priority two, priority three, priority four. Every semester after going through the scorecard reports, we generated a points of pride from each of those priorities. So when the board members were going in, let's say I didn't, now I carried that thing in my pocket. Because if someone said, hey, tell us what's going on in the school, we have four priorities. And the priority one this semester, our celebrations are, you know, I had them bulleted out. But then the trustees said, well, I'm not, I can do that. I'll go do that tomorrow. You don't, you're, you know, whatever. You don't, and then the trustees, so to this category four, we got very systematic about advocacy, local advocacy. I'll just say advocacy is 
say that this is important, but local advocacy. Bullen and Campbell say that um, advocacy is coherence making. I personally don't know that that, you know, it's practically that it's that we, if you go, when you say I can't go at the last minute, and you go, but it's going to be about the same message. Because we've got our points of pride from our world Does that make so, sense? So let me, so um, should we, because like we do have liaisons. We have liaisons for schools, but then we have stuff that's outside. So like we have a Parks and Rec, and we have somebody in Grapevine Education Foundation, and we have, um, what others not? Um, PTA, Jack, uh, you know, they, I don't know. So we've got liaisons in, in different elements, but you never know what um, is occurring in those. Like as a board, as a board, it's as a board. And at that point, sure. You've got the pieces there, but they need to be charted and tracked. So that you can, we, we can know each other where, accountable. Yeah. That's right. Right. You're saying hold, or we're going to hold each other accountable to results. You're all going to hold each other accountable to be. So does that mean, like at a board meeting during announcements, that that's where you would yeah. maybe say, "I went to the blah blah blah. This yeah. is what occurred." Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's how we're we're keeping it abreast. That's right. 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 Whatever. Of our 27 places that we said we knew someone would be at, we did 90% of it. <coughs> it's just that simple. And you all have the tools that place. It's just being very systematic about it, right? And transparent. The last thing you said was transparency. What, but no one knows? That's exactly right, because we don't communicate like that out. And maybe, you know, like your idea that, you know, maybe I'm assigned to the Democrat Chamber, but I can't. So somebody else can put that. Right, so I'm not going to be there, so I'll get it. And some of us are just members anyway. Yeah. Correct. A lot of us go and talk to those people. Correct. Um, don't write back and report on them. Right. All right, is that fair? So if we do that work, you're going to get all left. And, and do you have a plan for statewide advocacy? Do you have a written plan? Do you invite legislators in? We did have the legislative agenda. And we did get redistricted so that we only have one six in there, one right now. She has been here a lot. So, so we have a budget, but I wouldn't say that we, we have a plan. So, do we have a plan to attack that no, we don't? Uh, that's what I think. Mean. It's um, a one paper. You know, this is the board's legislative plan. See, every October, the October coming up, we wanted to um, bring that. So legislation gets approved every other year on an odd number of years between January and May, or in this case, until <laughs> yeah, it's not around on special session, right. that's right. What, what a lot of people don't realize is legislation is generally being written during this year. Right. And if you're not right in their ear, like bills are already getting written. Right. That session, so that's why on the first day to file, they're filing on 8,000 of them get filed. They were written 18 months before. Then we even get lax on that off year. That's the year. It's almost just like Major Pop Funny wants to show during a session. I don't mean that. We still have to call and keep pressure on, but the real influence is in the off year. So this is being real intentional about what we do in a very quarter for the whole two year cycle of a value. We should be doing something at quarterly. We would do a candidate form during the primary. The board would sponsor it. Uh, and we didn't make a opinion. We just stole every idea, but we just put it on chart and called it a minute. Yeah. We didn't, I mean, we didn't PTA, create any. Yeah, PTA Park Corporation in Texas um, this last primary season. So it's involved in multiple events across the And yet, Bridger in Texas has the core now that they're working on. Basically, that is to create a plan on the top. And you want to participate in the, um, in the entire grassroots process with ESPN as well. And so that should be on that level. Yeah. And it yeah. should be one or two or three, whatever it is, you know, they're committing to well, that's on that level. Yeah. 
Anyway, if, if that, but then when you look at those questions, do we have a system that is regular? Or do we have a system that is regular? And I'm, I'm not going to just like keep digging into the, the one and two and uh, your board operating guidelines and clarity. That really gets to the third one and the fifth one on this. I think on the sixth one, which is systematic about budget preparation, that was in the prior report, report the long ago, right? That transparency and all the boards that are going to be involved in that. I say don't even look and sit on your scorecard until priority four reports get started. You see what I'm saying? And, and the value add for priority four becomes your good governance sits. I'll give you an example. He was talking a lot ago about clarity and transparency. Uh, this was the idea of the board in SMUC, and I bought into it first, and I'm just going to you know, like, no, we're that we can't do that. And Mr. Harris got here, board vice president, and said, right now, I don't have a gun in your head, but if I take a gun your head, it's November, you tell me what's on your mind about the August budget next year. And I was like, sure, Mr. Harry, we don't have numbers on it. He said, no, I'm telling you, start talking. Well, I just said, I just started grabbing all, all the revenue assumptions and all the expenditure assumptions. And he said, did you already have all that? I said, yeah, but we just, it's not validated. That's my hunch. And he said, I don't care. The board needs to know what you're already thinking. Hmm. You see what I mean? It's like, oh, he said, then, then it's not like we asked for a sip of water in June and y'all you know, just turned the fire hose on us. You know, we waited until all the data was perfect before we started talking about it. But, and he, I mean, he, he, he just got me. He's like, you're right, sir. So we, the board, adopted an SEC the budget parameter memo every February, but y'all July 1 or September or July. So it might even back up a little bit. It's like January, you're, uh, you're approving. That, that wasn't my idea, that was the board's idea, the budget parameter memo for the budget that's coming in six months. You're not adopting the budget. You're just saying, let's consider a 3% compensation increase. Let's consider, are we going to use the highest student growth number or the lowest student growth number? What assumption are we going to use? Now, this year would have been a train wreck to try to do a budget parameter memo because we still won't know until a month. We have 60 days from now. But generally speaking, that helped the board. In, so once the board adopted it, then they just monitored it month by month by month. And we just said that assumption went up 2%, that one went down 2%. And in our budget, the board chumps quit. Quit it because we had been touching on it every single month. And we try to do that. It's not every month, but we start early. Yeah, or about early. November. Because of tomorrow morning, one of those brainers and those conversations that they take me some of This, again, you all may have the tool already. It's just getting in a yeah. format that everybody is comfortable here and your party board is comfortable because this is a check on all your Yeah, we always point. pass the parameters in here in December, January. That's right. So yeah. now it's, it's just yeah. about increasing transparency and understanding the district wide to me and the right And that's rare, by the way. So we do this for y'all who already have it. So see, your six work will line right up to the 4.1 work that's going on. So I'll wait a y'all got that one going up. So, um, so you started at four, so just, I, this is very insignificant, but I, I typed up just some liaison ideas for schools because I had some questions about what things can we do. So I just kind of brainstormed some things like that you could possibly do for your canvases. Um, uh, I kind of asked the teachers like some ideas. One of the things that if you have an elementary school the first week uh, of school when, when parents really aren't going to be inside the buildings, they can help with lunch, help open milk, help all the littles get you know situated and you know learning how to do the cafeteria. So anyway, that's just that's an easy way to, to kind of get in your campus if, if you have an elementary school. But I have some other ideas on there. Um, so that was just to kind of give you some thoughts. What do you think about what he's saying? So if we have, um, so just to do we want to start these updates then? Like for, do we want to start that in September also? 
score part of it. No, the, um, like the updates for like the board, oh, the, the PTA, the, the Parks and Rec, because none of this stuff will be. That would work because the regular voting date is September 25th, right? which would mean that almost, first of all, school's back in session and everything it should have had. Right. So, yep. so I think that um, we'll start that in September. We're, if, if, if you're at your, now, campus stuff, even that, that's yeah, see, I heard, some. Well, on the 4.1, when I see, did we have an active plan for advocacy in the district? In right. Common community, common state, the district is the lights on plan, I think, is what I'm hearing. On 4.1, is that right? We would not respond on every campus that you do, but every trustee made a report. Made a what? Made a report. to the announcement than we had the last meeting, but instead you be just reporting on something that your lives on position did. It might not have to be, I visited every school campus and we did, you know, blah, 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 but that could be the opportunity to have it. Like this month I went to Cross Timbers and, you know, that's to the pack rally. That's all we're saying. And then in October <clears throat> I went to the Fall Festival and I had done all my you're right, and you know, we still yeah. do it. <laughs> so I think the ones that are, yeah. that are maybe you don't know about, you know, because you're not, I don't know, because mm -hmm. that we don't get board updates on and things like that, you know, like, because it would be, parks so what does Parks and Rec do? Yeah. What, what, what's going on there? What's going on with the Shack board? But, you know, what's going on with, you know, the big yeah. body yeah. 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 short. Right. Uh, right now, the Collegial Chambers are yeah. going to partner again this year. Right. Right. You all right. seven of you will still be that if it's one minute a report, that's seven minutes. And that's okay. Like, we're literally going, you know, start down the dive. It's one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Okay. Seven right. minutes. We've, that's okay. <laughs> September 24th. Yeah, we'll start. We'll start. Put that in September. It's accountability for two, seven, one, two, right? Okay. So everybody knows. It's, I've got to make sure I get it done because we're reporting it out. Right? And kind of to like what Becky's saying, like if the shack's not meeting, I don't know if they're going to be. Yeah, so right. It, yeah, they're they're right. Right. Out, but, right. You only have one. But you have four other, three or four other. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You, there should be. The, but the you shack. still say the shack did not meet. Just sure. so I don't have to report, but that reminds me about my gal. They're all, she's the ladies on to the shack. Yeah. Yeah. Like not on campuses, but things that are outside GCSD help each other cover it. These, these Right. So the, this asserts that there's three buckets. So the district, meaning school district, I think. So that's school district stuff in the community. The stuff we were talking about a while ago, the chambers, and, and then the state is more of this. Say what, and you know what we in October we're going to have the reps come, you know, or the candidates are going to come for whatever, or we're going to invite your rep to get one senator, one rep, and you're going to invite them to come speak to the tactical team and the senior leader team. And well, so what's going to happen on the 89th? One of the things that we're going to start, we're starting this in August, so we're going to have a municipal minute, and we're going to bring in Ulysses um, at a great ride in Coddle. And so they will send a representative, and that representative will come, and they're going to have three to five minutes. We'll do this at the beginning of our meeting, so before really we get to, um, to the meeting of what, what we're doing. But have them give updates, but this is a way for us to uh, start partnering and bridging relationships with uh, the cities. And so I think it'll start off somewhat, you know, superficial, just because, you know, we haven't really done it, but my thought is that it's going to grow because we're going to start opening these doors to have a relationship with one another. So when, when we have a need or if, if we can, you know, partner in some way. So I, I really think it's a, a cool way that this kind of leads to, but we're going to start that. It starts with the relationship. Yes. So we're, we're going to bring, so that'll be on a more localized level, not really the kind of advocacy, but not, you know, at the state. So. Well, but you, so I, I, I think in terms of charts, Shot well, but you have a chart for a district. 
It could be a chart with three columns, district, state, uh, I'm sorry, community, you know, state or whatever. And it, then it's just January, February, March, April, May, June. And then it's just, you start with getting those calendars together. That's like, what we're doing. We're going to meet dates with each civic group. Correct. What are our board meeting dates? So you know, we're probably going to have a report of this in September. This, you know, so just you start piecing it together yeah. like that. Figure out who's going to be the point person. And we had, I do remember, logistically, this is real practical, but we decided at the beginning, you know, it was coming out, the executive session at the end of the meeting, everybody's tired. But then I know that for 10 minutes, we looked at the next 60 days calendar to prompt someone to say, oh, I'm gone, I can't do that. We have the whole planning calendar on, on, every, yeah. on, on every agenda. Okay, yeah. and then does yes. it include your address calendar? No, 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 but it does okay. have, it does, it we have, right well, we that. do have the board activities calendar that does list by month, here's the things we'll be doing in this month, this month, this month, this month. So it's, it's, so it's always in there so that we know next month, so it's, it's really not just 60 days, we've got everything laid out. Well, I think Dr. Sasha just leaking towards this. So that question that's on here says that it includes individual and the board as a whole. Sure. So then, no, I'm not disputing what you're saying. I yeah. think you were describing an individual trustee that when we have this responsibility for the whole board that we're going to make sure somebody's at all these things. Right. Yes. 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 Individual trustee's responsibility and board as a whole. Okay. So get it all in the on one chart. It's going to be a big chart. A lot of stuff going on. Right? There, there is, but unlike your example, we really only have three cities. Yeah, that's, that's It's a little easier to manage, I think. I, when I retired, I had 29 city council yeah, members, so cell phone had. numbers, <coughs> I, I noticed. And it was fun. I mean, I was happy to do it, but yeah. I'm not going to miss all the text messages from all the different cities. A lot of them started with, I heard the city of Lyon got to do Lyon. You know, why, why don't we get to do Lyon? Right. So how do you manage that chart? Just based off the meetings? Or do you have a list? Well, it, uh, we felt like it was just uh, September, October, November, December, January. Well, I've got some samples. Okay. Because it should, it's just the accountability. You said it right off the bat. To me, I keep, keep, keep coming back to that, but it's in September we are committing to do these things. In October we are committing to do these things. If someone's going on a cruise and to, in August, then she's not going to be at that, so somebody has to finish it. Okay. You know, whoever said they were going to go has to think ahead and say, I can't do it. I've got to have someone cover for it. That's the main thing. And it's systematic because we've laid out the year and we've laid that's that's going down on the chart and we've laid out the expectations going across on the chart. So there's there's that chart that has um, like these civic organizations and their meetings and the advocacy and things like that. When we do our reports, I'm just clarifying to say this back, we include that plus our campus liaisons or things that we're working on. I think so, and then you're basically hitting on all the pieces, you know, that were on the chart. That you, I think it's easier for each trustee to just report on the things that they did. Then, I mean, it's back to that common language. The first thing I did as a light zone was this. First thing I did as part of our community advocacy chart was this. And then I did get the senator, you know, which senator? And Parker. Parker, Parker lined up to come. You know, I was designated as the one to ask him to come and speak, and I got his confirmed. So you touched on all the big buckets. And you know, you just demonstrated accountability to the work. Okay, and then so for three kind of gets done just for creating all this stuff. And so four three is kind of that. Okay. Okay. Three and five 
really good at the board operating procedures and that on the main systematic about that. Okay. Six or seven within a way until right. the priority board reports them. That kind of speeds up board operating guy, not the good. I thought okay. I saw them floating around one yeah. day. So um, so you you got the board operating guidelines. First of all, so Frank suggested that we rename those. And can you talk to us a little bit about that? Do I've worked around a lot of lawyers and you know have set up a will probably speak out for my book as a super thing. What the subject of the moment was uh, seven? You all had seven? Okay, so well we we have a special. No, 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 no. I didn't say that <laughs> I said that just to put it out there then. Okay. We would have a general counsel for the board, gotcha. which may be, I don't know if you also ran We just added, okay, okay. okay. added then, to it. But then if it was special ed, then if it was HR, mm -hmm. we had specialists, and the general counsel would have to get into the special So that this, that GCSD is not in the to this as well. No, I, I, you know, it, it's, you know, that we have, that we have the board attorney. It's like lawyers, you know, kind of put them, kind of put them out, right? Yeah. So, so, yeah. Trustees help the superintendent do his or her job, our communication. 
information protocols, social media norms. I mean, like, are you your own social media account? Or, or what's your board member? Are you now on social media as a trustee? You know, that gets real wonky. I'm sure there's a lot of legal stuff happening because social media about gets volunteering and campus norms. Okay, so then I, I just basically the rest of this is just sample norms. It's similar to what y'all just showed me, but it's a little bit different. It's okay. almost like some behavioral expectations. Here in the consent between me. Okay. So I also have um, what I gave y'all is a possible civility uh, uh, so civility and conduct. So this is what, so unacceptable behavior, expected level of behavior. Yeah, now this is, similar to yeah, yeah, this is more. This is codifying it in policy. This is codifying it in board operating okay. guidelines. It's the way I see that. And either is fine or both fine. Is that fair to say? Sure, I totally agree with that. I think that putting something in policy may give it a little bit more teeth because it's right. kind of the local law that applies to the school district. But, but that's a board decision. If the board and if the board adopts the board operating procedures, what would say becomes a good governance handbook, and they adopt it, technically it carries the weight of that local adoption. And that fair to say it's just that that's codified. You, you said that raised it to be on a higher level. It's in your policy handbook. Right. Saying, right. 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 And I don't know that technically that would raise it to a higher level. That's just simply I think how districts think about it. Right. The policy. They can choose to review it regularly. This is what's said in the good governance and for you not just to be a one and done event. Mm -hmm. but to Let's regularly. talk about how we did it last year. It was handed out, we all signed it, and then it went on a wall. That was we it. are talking about the honor, the right. honor pledge, which you don't even really know what you're, no. you're signing. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One yeah, thing I know here is that there are different things in a lot of different places. Nothing could have helped to do it in one place. Right. You never do it regularly. Meaning every quarter. And get it all in one place and give it to um, any board members. Oh, yes. absolutely. Yes. Like, before that's, they, that starts the meeting. That starts they, the orientation. These are our homes. Before they sit down in the chair. Right. Before they're sworn in. So I do, you know, you, yeah, I do think it's consolidating some things into one place and then just deciding what's the most appropriate place to hold it. Well, the last yeah. couple of years have been, I would assume, that Becky's been here for the longest time, um, different than the years before because we've had a lot of turnover right. and with, with staff, you know, superintendent on down. So I think that this is a good time to get it all in one place and to, um, because I know coming in as a board member last year, it was kind of all over the place. Kathy, So I do want to tell one. Time, one Place and it's a little tighter. The, the regular review, we could do that any number of ways. We we put it on the board match calendar quarter, and it didn't mean that we're going to sit here and clip through everything. Anybody, anybody, anybody. It was just on the board. And if there wasn't any, if, if no trustee had said, I want to change this part of it, it was just the quarterly review. And it was in the board book, and then it came up on the agenda. And it was, did that prompt anybody to think about anything that needs to change? No? Okay. Then are we good? Yes. We did. We adopted it. It was just a quarter. But it was out there for people, anybody? for us just to think about it. Right. Why you read the board book? Did something happen that it might have been better if we had tightened up a norm? And instead of waiting until the end of the year or the end of the decade, or when something happened. That's right, or the event happens. Right. You know there's a quarterly review, and that's the most appropriate time to bring it up. Yeah. Where did this come from? Uh, there's a local law, or a law passed in Florida, and there's some language that was drawn from, um, but that's a draft policy. Gotcha. I agree. It's great. It's great. I, those look interesting in more. I think it looks a whole lot like How about it? Yeah, I mean, it looks a lot like the other one. Well, I'm just saying, so those are not 
with someone. We we didn't even talk. I just uh, the first time we just said it all ago. But those look. It's I think it's kind of cool that you brought a sample that you found and then here you set it on. It really looks a lot like that. So would it be redundant if we had policy and incorporated? I mean, had that policy and then had a good guide that included the policy along with that's a good procedures, way to do it. Operating and procedures and maybe other expectations or norms that are not included in the policy. I don't, you, you're, it is redundant, but I think it's purposefully redundant. Mm -hmm. Saying you're not going to go print out the B section, how big is the B section of the policy? Probably. That's it. Very lengthy. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> so here, here you go, new trustee. Read all the B policies. If you've never yeah. had the binder, though, I don't think you have the full appreciation. Yes, it's hard. Yes. Like it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's easy now, now that it's all electronic. Right. You don't go like that. So, so what, I, yeah. you're pulling out a policy which raises the accountability to it, the pieces that you're saying are the most salient points, kind of like a scorecard. What if in these two stacks of B policies, you know, what are the 10 things we need to bring over? Yeah, I'm sure. Them over work as, work. as a new school board member, I thought, well, I'm responsible for policy. I better go read it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So, what happens to a trustee that doesn't behave according to these policies? If they're adopted and all the stuff, what, what Not happens? here, but across the state. You know, the lawyer, y'all can watch her body language as I talk. But, that, you know, I, you hear of um, your trustees being censured after maybe the board. You know, formally in a meeting, you're saying, hey, don't do that. And then, but they continue to do it, not here, but in places. So, and my, so censure is basically lying on like, That's the tool that the board possesses, right? Is a censure. Yeah, and I, I think there's multiple tools in their tool belt there, but censure possibly being one of the most extreme. Uh, I mean, there's steps that can be taken before that, whether it's a conversation between the board and president, not trustee, whether it's a conversation among the board, closed session, or Comment in an open session um, where those are appropriate. Um, conversation between board attorney, either written or verbal, with the trustee who's not following the policy, um, a reminder of what the policy is, and then leading up to censure. And you know, okay, so, what is censure? It's a strongly worded memo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in official plain word. terms, just signaling to the public through a written communication of the board um, at board meeting. What actions of a trustee have led to not following the policy, what that policy is, and then the board is recognizing that. Publicly. Yeah, publicly. Right. And I love that. It's like the most public way. And the thing about the, so if I get not here, not here, not here, not here, but I'm working with a district that put the norms in place, and they were adopted on the 6 1 vote. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> okay, then they wound up with the censure. Just so turned out to be the one that voted against the norms. But when they, even though that trustee voted against the norms, it's, they still were the norms that were boarded up in 6 1. So they applied to that trustee even though she voted against Is this the story you were telling that right after that happened and we just got right back into business? Um, it's, it's not, it's, but it's very similar to that because that person, now that you said that, I was actually talking about the experience with me. And, but they got right back to business on the school card right after yes, that. They wow. Yeah, but, it was, but they did almost the same thing. Okay. And she kind of got, okay. I voted against it, but it turns out that the censure, y'all were really serious about following you know, that. The censure did it. That, that kind of right at the ship. So along those lines, I mean, so the um, What advice do you have for us in terms of, so, so we, we have, um, you know, our, 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 our guidelines that, you know, the Board of Trustee operating procedures, and so like one of them, for example, is that you go to the board president to get things on the agenda, and if you have, you know, issues with the meeting, and if you're bypassing the, the president, how, how, how does one deal with, with that scenario. If you're going to bypass and you're, you're going straight to... I think that's a good idea. It's a part of your board operating guidelines. Yes. What's those steps that she said along with okay. verbal? Publicly? 
lady is talking about it in the center. So maybe this is a good opportunity. So Becky, it's, it's necessary for you to go to the board president. Uh, if, if you're, you, you sent an email last night to Brad, this, this was our meeting, that email, um, you were part of deciding what the date of this was. Apparently you picked the location. So, uh, you know, you would be making a confusion in the box and pick the location. Uh, I, I, I did send an email to Brad. There's nothing in board operating procedures that precludes any for you, you were saying that uh, you, you were speaking on, you called me and then had to read it to me, mm -hmm. uh, and then how to respond. Sure. But sure, yeah. um, with, with, you said that the agenda wasn't worded correctly. I mean, everything that's being discussed My is on My impression this from our last, um, and this is the conversation that I had with Brad. So, Greg, I apologize. At the end of our meeting, I thought we were still continuing team of A training. But Brad assured me that we'd actually completed all of that. And so Brad and I had a discussion and got everything worked out just fine. Okay. So, I'm going to send you a certificate for team of A. You have qualified for a And this was not a continuation of it. And I thought we were doing a two part team of A training. Well, I think I may have led to that confusion. If we do right. this and we do it right, your team of A never stops. Okay. So this is no, still general. Okay. And so, again, led to my confusion over because the previous agenda, of course, said team of A training, right? And this one did not. And so, Brad helped me clarify the fact that. Although now it's sounding like, yes, it is team of A training. Well, I think, what's wrong with that? Right, I think. Just, just, just making sure that the agenda is correct. Okay. Well, I mean, I like that he said that team of A never stops. And well, but you can't, he can't give credit to, as a trainer for every single meeting that we have. Well, now I can't give you credit. I yeah, felt like with the right. reading. Well, and I felt like that was too something hours the other night and there was at least an hour of reading and I knew we were going to do this meeting for a gym. So you just get your certificates whenever you want them because Sure, sure, sure. But and, and, and the other issue is of course the fact that the team of A training is a is a required training, right? right? And so all that email was was asking Brad, hey, is this agenda correct? Because my impression from you was that we were doing team of A in two well, I just want to follow up on that too. Anytime I get an email or correspondence from a trustee about the agenda, I'll, I'll always refer it to the board president because we set that in conjunction. And I think it's it, it, it's only fair for the board president to be aware of that correspondence. And again, because it is about the agenda, there are questions about the meeting. And so I want to make sure too that I'm of the, the same understanding when that, when that agenda was set that, hey, I'm, I'm clear. The board president's clear. So, the response well, back. Well, when the board president be copied, I know when mm -hmm. I send it, I always copy the board president. Uh, it was I, merely a question clarifying the training. Uh, well, you asked ask for clarifying stuff. You asked for documented. You well, asked yes, for, because it turns out we are getting documented. Yeah, so and we, we all got this. And that's, that's fine. fine. And Brad said, we don't have any documents. That, that's fine. Okay. I mean, it, it would have been nice to have these to review. Coming in here, okay, and now so my expectation is that they will be posted. Last year, year uh, did did you go through the board president to discuss on the agenda? So I wasn't requesting anything to be specific. I'm just asking. Did last year? Did you, so did you? last year, we fought at the exact same procedures we do now. Uh -huh. Two trustees request something to put on the agenda, uh -huh. and then how do you get something on the agenda? You request two trustees. How do you request? request how do you request? To your trustees right. I was you just question. throw it out in the air when you're at home? You just throw it outside and out and it just shows up on the agenda? How does it get on the agenda? I, I guess I'm not quite understanding why we're How do you get it? it? If you have two trustees, who did you contact to get it on the agenda? So, I'm not quite sure where this line of questioning is going. I'm asking if... So, so I followed the board operating procedures. So you contacted here. the board president? When I had something to request to come on the agenda, I followed the board operations. Brad, is that true? Yeah. Uh, Brad wasn't the superintendent last year. 
Well, he was. He was in a room for uh, from January. Yeah, he was. He was I'm talking okay, about. Okay, again. I didn't even request so, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that you need to go through the board president or, and we need to follow these items. And I uh, wasn't requesting anything to the manager. Okay, I understand that, but it was about the meeting that he did not call. We sat, we sat the meeting on the 6th of June. So I, my concern was, in looking at the workbook, we had a pretty extensive um, agenda item, and there were absolutely no documents attached to it. And so I reached out to the superintendent to say, hey, please send me the documents we're going to be going over. And I do appreciate the fact that we did get a copy of board operating procedures in our email. It would have been nice to have these additional things ahead of the meeting. I requested for them to be sent on Friday, and they didn't get sent on Friday. They got sent today. So, okay, well, um, Shannon, I had nothing to do with the fact that they didn't get sent out. Okay. Um, so I, I think that's Yeah, and then we'll 
also do that, I think. Okay, so you're basically, that's, the other thing is, you want me to be able to tell them, you want them 30 minutes with questions. And I'm serious, like, it doesn't need to be one of these, you know, there could be an exception in February on priority one, right? Mary talked about the president. Generally speaking, it's a 30 minute, it's a five minute QA, or it's a 20 minute wait. Right? If I may, y'all heard that you're going to do reports. How long do y'all think trustees, how long do y'all think they should be? How long do I think they minutes. should be, or how long can I separate? No, how long do you want them to be? So I'm just asking you to say it again. 20, 30 minutes. Oh, total. The, oh, the yeah, scorecard report. Scorecard report, right? Yeah. 20, 30 yeah, 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, that was, isn't that about what Robert was doing? Yeah, he wanted the 20 minutes with questions, but it's really up to the board. I mean, that was that board, and we did it for eight years, so it worked. Up. It worked. And if something got longer and protracted out of that, we would put it on the next month as a discussion on the follow up. Right? It's because we're trying. Now, the deputy superintendent brought me a 90 slide PowerPoint for the first 20 minute report. I was like, sorry, I said 9 to 10, not 9 slides. So we had to really. You, you can tell this thing. So we can most definitely condition this into 20 minutes. Or here's here's where we kind of hit. Is it 20 minutes with questions? Okay. Or, or is, it, is it 20 minutes on the presentation or reporting? And then we have a QA and that can go. I think 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Because I think what what, what we've kind of gotten away from in, in, in the past, we've had, you know, you, get, you guys get the packet on Fridays. And have a chance to kind of go through it, get questions to us. Well, we sometimes we don't get those questions, you know, ahead of time, and so we're not able to address maybe some initial questions that you guys have. And then all of the questions now are, are in that, that reporting time or in the, in the board meeting, right? So I think we could save ourselves some of that time for some questions. I realize there are some questions that are saying that are recording and come out here, you know, reporting. Correct. Correct. Yeah, and so, I, I mean, if we can, if we want to nail down a window of say 20 minutes for the, the reporting and the, the Q and A, I mean, I'm good with that. I think I like those 20 minutes for questions. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
that makes sense. Then to your point, the story of this whole thing. The, like yeah. the informational, yeah. Uh, and you, you're saying you're about to add possibly 30 minutes to the board meeting, but you're front loading what you're about to adopt is what you need to get accomplished. Right. right? I do. Mr. Whisper said, I want to take the whole industry here and they work together. I think this is crazy. I'm the lawyers here. But we took the AA legal, the board shall, and then there's another list, the board may, right? So board shall, board may. We took our 12 months of board calendar and we highlighted in yellow what was board shall, part of the report, and then we highlighted in green what was the board may. Two thirds of what was on the board agenda was board may, not board shall. Mr. Westbrook said, I want all that off the agenda. So, my, my concern is, right, that remembering the I in ISD is, is infinite, right? And, you know, y'all had seven cities to deal with, we only have 40, um, and, you know, we only have a tiny part of, of one. Um, and so I think our community, you, know, you see it in the, uh, in the, oh, where it go? In the, the two pieces that you got from the trust. Yes, yeah. thank you. Um, that there is a high level of expectation of communication, or transparency, um, information sharing, right? So. Yeah, I, so we interpret, I hear what you're saying. Thank yeah. you for that. We, we interpreted that. Fewer things better with communication than a lot of nothing that nobody shares. Yeah. That was our interpretation. Right. right. I, I think, I mean, I'd, I'd have to pull our board planning um, agenda calendar right now. I, I think we actually do a pretty good job of a lot of that is the shall, not so much the may. Or if it is the may, it's the stuff that, you know, our community is needed. Right. The, the drop report is one example. The quality cup is another example. Right. Um, you know. Hey, so it, that's good. Actually, All the drop report is a you know, challenge. I'm just thinking that it's prudent periodically for the board to say, why is this on the agenda? That's all I'm saying. Like, if it's not required, then the object that we have. 20 things on the board of the annual calendar that were on there because someone asked for it 15 years before one yeah. time. And then, then they pulled the August 2011. How am I going to develop the August 2011 agenda? I'm going to look at the August 2010 agenda. So now it's on there two years. And so now it's August 2012. We're doing it again, again, and again. And then we're going back and asking who asked for that to go on in 2010. And those trustees are going, we have no idea. But we sure have been hitting it every year, you know, with no point no. So it's just, I'm not saying don't do it, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah. And then the other tool on the tool. We, we need to do what's valuable. We that's need right. to do what's valuable. Your things, deeper, right. better right. understanding than right. what's really valuable. Right. And then utilize the consent of change you only are. Right. But that is yeah. a really good tool. Well, here, so, it, it can start looking like you're just hiding stuff. Okay, so here's a way. Here's a way to utilize the agenda in my opinion, and it be very transparent. And I don't. I may be about to flip the tables over if I do. I apologize. <laughs> I think I can just go out right there. The an item should never. I believe strongly an action item the first time it appears on the agenda. Generally speaking. So if an item gets on the agenda and it's an action, I think there should be in the board operating guidelines, an item should be a discussion item. Only eligible for discussion one month, then it's eligible for action the next month. Then let's say you have, you have six discussion items, let's say. The seventh one is items eligible for next month's consent agenda. So then the board says, collectively, all six of those can go on consent agenda. And then Mr. Butito said, Does but you're doing, it, so you're doing it on the camera in front of everybody after a 20-minute discussion on each one of them. And then, and, and then 
like there would be a trustee that would say, I think we need to have one more discussion on item J. Yeah. Okay. That not that this is what we like for predetermining what the vote would be on that item. How are you getting that? Like if you have something well, on well, anyone can any trustee can pull an item off of consent agenda anyway. So if they've changed their mind or they've changed their thought, I want that pulled off of consent agenda. Have another discussion. Do the four three vote, three four vote, whatever, and then go on. It's so, in terms of consent, everything that's on the consent agenda is obviously right. been. I mean, it's the general you know, change would have. Yeah, there's very, there's very little actually pulled off. I just, I mean, finance, you know, vendors that are um, general services, yeah, uh, technology services. services. I mean, yeah. and it's all very standard. I, I wouldn't uh, personnel report. Right. I mean, I wouldn't consider that anything is. I, I'm not level. saying it's going to work for you. It worked for us for ages. Yeah. I will well, tell you that it worked for us for ages. So that means it does sound efficient, and we've allowed for the discussion. We had the discussion. We had the public discourse, and then so if, if that teased out something through the watching online, that was yeah. usually the rationale for someone to pull it to say, "I've got to ask a few more questions." And that also that does right. give you that does give you right. a more time right. to flush something out. Correct. That's all we're saying. It's like, did we give you enough information this month for everybody to be ready to vote? Yeah, and, and a lot of times it's interesting that in a sense it puts a little bit more onus on staff, but also prevents staff from feeling like they're put on the spot when the item that, is actually exactly right. Like at first it was like are you where did you come from? Senior leaders to me. It's like you can't tell me, just like Mr. Harris, you can't tell me that you don't know stuff from 30 days ahead. And you just have to come back to work a little bit. Right, right. Once right. that's done, the staff liked it. Because the pressure wasn't on. That it's probably done tonight. We had a good, robust discussion the 30 days prior to the end. I'm not saying do that. No, no, no. Yeah, that's a good idea. But what, so what, but back to the informational item that's on there repetitively, I think we need to add language um, to board operating procedures that state that if an item, if, that you can't rebring it back month after month after month just because, you know, well, we shouldn't be weaponizing the seats that we're in. I think if two trustees have a concern about something, then if the information the hasn't changed and you've already gone through the entire process of discussing all of that, if you're trying to uh, politicize it, it's not helpful. And, and, and I can give you uh, multiple examples I think of that. Two trustees have a concern about something. Well, that's why I'm saying we need to change that in board operating procedures. We need to decide that here <laughs> because that stuff is being weaponized. I think if two trustees have an issue with something, and they need to be able to bring it forward. But the two trustees part wouldn't change. The two trustees part doesn't change, but if it's, if it's being weaponized and there's no changed information, what is the value in continuing to bring it up month after month after month? Well, and to put the staff under the Exactly. So that, that, is, that is democracy. That is a meeting. That is a Right, is which is where we're going to put a policy then that it's going to be up to the board president's discretion. That I don't think that there is an abuse of power. And I don't think discretion. Power, and there's discretion in there in front of it. I, I think that having two trustees, for what? Two trustees, look, here's the deal. If two trustees want to put something on the agenda for 12 months in a row, then come every three years, it's up to the voters to say, you know what? We don't like this. Yeah. Maybe you could take more than two trustees to do something. I think you could really get into a um, potential for a walking tour. You go that way. You do three. I think, again, that I think, uh, I think you're starting to add in the number of people there, but I think you can get in a really sticky situation. Uh, What's uh, the thing? Huh? I mean, a walking board over here would be four. Right. Uh, no, I, 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 I can count. I, I know that, right? 
right, but what I think that it starts to, it, it, it gets really, really close to that line, and I, I think it can be very problematic. I, I mean, if two trustees put something on the agenda, let it go on the agenda, right? I mean, what is there to be afraid of? To There's nothing to be afraid of. Anything. It's just nothing changes. When, when you go through hours of so the same political thing for hours, and then you want to do it again for hours, and then you want to do it again for hours, that's unnecessary. So because I think we what, I, I'm, I'm speaking. Uh, what has been stated here is that we, we feel like and th that there, you know, a, a, a twenty-minute full-on uh, question and answer for for a staff that that, that seems like a reasonable uh, time limit when one person takes up the full thirty minutes, forty-five minutes. It you know it gets extended, and that's up to the voters to determine if they want their voice on the board. What's a whole different? Yeah, the a whole different. And I, this is just me and I got kind of grouchy as I was eligible for the town. And again, this happens. You, I cared a lot. I kept working, but you know, I also. But if I, if there was something repetitive like that, I'm just being really frank here, and nothing had changed. So, I would, and the policy was for two to put it on. I would say good, but it's a three-minute presentation, and basically just say nothing has changed. So I put a limit to it. So put a ton of limits to the presentation and the questions. Well, I mean, I did all the time to the staff member. Don't you take more than three minutes? So how do you control the question? You can ask it. But if we know that's coming, then make it three minutes. Like, I would just tell the staff. So three three minutes. Minutes. I want you to see in our staff get just stick real. Oh, we're not When nothing's changed, and it's just for Well, I, so you know, we said earlier about the harmony relationship between the tactical and the strategic team. All, I feel like there's eight people here that really want this scorecard to work. It's going to break down if that's happening. So then, yeah, maybe the scorecard right? will not work if employees and, are being, because they're, they're, they're not going to be not honest not. about lead indicators if they know we're going to get beat up. So that goes to what you said um, in the first the first meeting, the first time you met, you said something profound because you 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 said, um, and I'm going to paraphrase, phrase, but you I don't yeah. Well, you. so basically, you said that you know we want for you used the example of finding money that that y'all had found right. money that had been wasted, you know, or, or you don't get the right. Fine. And so then when you bring it up, and then instead of well, what what idiot was doing that the no, whole time, right, right, and so instead of it. That you focus on the positive, that yay, we've now found, you know, some inefficiencies. That's correct. Right. And so, you, the, so, we're, so this is just my prediction. If that kind of team trust between the tactical team and the strategic team isn't addressed, the scorecards are going to start great guns, mm -hmm. and they're going to just dwindle away, and y'all are going to stop because it's going to turn into a weapon. I just do that blunt. Like it has to. Rust. Well, and I, you know, it's one of the things I want, I want transparency with the things we're doing well, but also the things that we're not doing well. That's that correct. We, need to form on. we don't have that harmonious relationship that you're talking about, that they're going to be afraid to tell us. That's correct. Right. Or afraid to tell the community. That's correct. And the only way to improve things is to say, here's some we have a problem. Like that is the only And have I want our something. staff to be able to stand up in front of the camera. Like we thought this was going to work, but guess what? That's exactly right. Yeah. Afraid that was great. Consequences for such. I the one tool. This is just a thought. But you know, we have the team dress something else. We we decided to not do that. Yeah, not because there's something interesting to not support that decision. So some of the districts that are implementing this work hard to keep a finger on the pulse of team trust. So the board and the superintendent take a team trust something else. And so and. The number equals eight on that one, typically. And then the superintendent and the tactical team take a team that does something else. It's also because there needs to be harmony between those teams. That's how many? Eight, right? You and eight of the Okay, nine. Okay, then we take a third team trust, which is everyone that was sitting around this rectangle. Now the number is eight plus nine, seven. 
see that we in the team trust is the tactical leadership team and the board combined. And then we're constantly looking at there's a district right now that wants to do a scorecard bad, and their team trust is so awful that I'm just saying don't deploy it. Do not implement it. Because it's not going to stop. It's not well, it's not gonna work. We're, we're going to get all hyped up about a brand new shiny red Corvette that has no engine. We won't get there and stomp on the gas and we're just going to sit there. Because if Stephen M. R. Covey's book, The Speed of Trust, that's performance, travels at the speed of trust. So you set the ceiling on the performance of the organization by having a lack of trust. Not y'all's expectations is the ceiling to be here. The trust is here, you ain't going to here. You've got to get this up closer to where this is right. to push. So how quickly can we take that? Well, but hold on, let's let's get just put a put a pin in that for just one second. But we're gonna do online sign up, so when just so do you when is that gonna start? Do you know? Uh I don't you already. Okay, so that'll start. Uh, you're going to be able to sign up, but don't quote me at the time. I think sometime in the morning, cuts off, I think, at 4. Um, oh, yeah, they have to come in. Oh, they don't have to come in. Oh, they don't have to come in. Sign up. Um, let's see. Start type. Uh, we need to change that in our operating procedures. Uh, or meeting time. Yeah, right. So uh, 5 o'clock is what we've been doing. So I it really needs to be, I prefer it be back to 7, but the minimum really should then be 6. I have work obligations. I have, so, been, and I have already rearranged my schedule to accommodate staff and other trustees. The meetings need to start at 6. It is incredibly difficult, and I've even had to take time off to be able to make meetings on time. The meetings need to start so at 7. In the two years that I've been on this, we, we had workshops that started at 5. Y'all just had it done differently. You had a, 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 a workshop, and then you had you started two different meetings. We have one continuous meeting. Uh, staff, our meetings are going until uh, 12 and 1 and 2 o'clock in the morning. So it, it, it is unfair to people that are driving very far, especially when you have uh, the workday ends, starting a meeting at 5, it has respect for everyone's time and people that need to get home, get to families, uh, you, you've made every meeting. So then so let's I meet in the middle and we'll say 6 o'clock. That gives me enough time to be able to shut down work and then be able to get here in a timely fashion. So it's just one meeting a month. Yeah. So it's one not one meeting a month. This is the third meeting. Well, no, so we've got a lot to get done for this year. We've got a lot. We've got a lot of new and a and lot of things. So There's a lot of work right now. I think is also respectful of our parents. I think that when I have when I some staff members that have got hotel rooms because the meetings go so long, it's, that's that's not that's not okay. So Starting by this is the most special thing to do. So I, I think all day, all day six is and one all night. Like, Minutes and, and it's accommodating. I, again, I'm going to go back to why I've accommodated multiple staff members. I've accommodated you, Brad. Um, I've accommodated Derek. Um, I don't think 6 o'clock is unreasonable at all. So, how about 5 30? Because I, 6 o'clock is six 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 of, uh, The normal six. meeting is supposed to be 7. In fact, that's still on the website right now. And well, this meeting is. wasn't even listed. As soon as we meet our first meeting in August, it will be the time. So, okay. so that will be all fixed. So I think it needs to be 6 o'clock. I think that's respectful of our parents. It'll so it's 5.30. Is that yeah. works for everybody? I think 5.30 is the 5.30 is what we're going with. Well, I guess we see the level of respect in that. Well, well, you, you have it. Yes, we have it. Yes, have it. I, everybody else is saying 5.30. And, and, and I am saying 7 actually minutes. Work with you for 30 minutes. Me, so let's meet in the middle. Well, we work with you for 30 minutes. And, and so. But You're one, and everybody else goes the other way. Okay. Everyone else goes the other way. Not until the dive for it. Um, not until the dive for it. Um, until the dive for it. Um, at my vacation time and my work and my job, um, I, I would appreciate the same respect that I'm affording staff. I, I really would. So next.
next item, um, let's see. Um, one thing we need to address is can speakers speak on someone's behalf? So uh, we've had some situations where people have come uh, to meetings uh, to sign up to speak. They haven't shown up or they have somebody speak uh, in their place. Um, I think my personal opinion is I think that you should, if you're not there, you can't speak. You can't speak. So um, I, I what do we think about that? I think we probably need to put that in policy to where speakers understand that if you're not present, you can't pass that off to somebody else. I agree with that, especially when making more accessible. Okay. Um, let me see if this is. Um, confidential information. Um, how do you have any suggestions for this scenario? If we have been given confidential information and that confidential information is then um, leaked, how, how does one go about it? So, Responsibility. So, like, I 
would do August, and then uh, Mary would do September, and Kathy would then do October. But I'll send out the calendar. Okay. So, um, just do one of those three There you go. So, um, so anyway, so that, that's an easy one. And then, um, is that one? Take it now, and then we have the parents for the 
August 14th meeting. Uh, uh, okay. Cool. okay. Let's do that, but can we put set parameters on it? Because I would like this not, I think this needs to start like this May. Like our, our reference point will be for May. I'm not.
feedback.
emailing you or, or not emailing you, but calling you 10 times a day. Is there a way that maybe you thought about that we're respecting your time uh, that we're not sucking too much of it uh, as, as individuals? One, one of the sample norms I've noticed says uh, we will respect the superintendent's time and limit individuals to be the one of those norms right. said that. Right. Right. Yeah. Like if, if all of us had something to talk to Brad about today, that would be the entire day. Say that again, Ken. If all of us had something to talk to, to oh, Brad one day, it would be his entire day. So that's the problem. Well, so what, what I'm trying to do, what uh, I'm working with Stephanie, we're trying to kind of get a hold of, of our space, our calendar. You know, and so what I'd like to do is, is sit down with her and figure out, because we're, we're starting to develop our routines. It can not start to transition out, guys. Okay? Kim is, is going to play with grandkids. And, oh, she's you know, uh, no, she's not yet. No, so, but, right. So, uh, let 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 me sit down with her and kind of talk about this. Okay. And then maybe on that August fourteenth, we can kind of we can kind of talk through that. And then we can talk through this. What I want to do also too is uh, I appreciate that first of all, all of you, but I also want to. To reciprocate that and honor that back to you guys and make sure I'm responsive and timely and all those things. And so finding that happy medium. And so let 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 me talk to Stephanie, sit down with her, but also to uh, think through it, you know, and okay. look at look at our calendar, look at just how the season, the, the fall, the spring, all the things that happen during, during the different phases, if you will, the, the year, and see what we can make kind of I'll pick your brain too. This is clear communication protocol. Yeah. Giving what talking about. You, you have that or already? I thought that yeah. might come up and it didn't until literally the yeah, last Sorry that I, I mean, I, I have to do that. <laughs> I forgot to figure that out. So sorry. How do you just keep pulling stuff out of your bag? Yeah, I'm just trying to think of everything all I bring up, but I just go. I just get very So, how I feel is like we're, we're getting all these pieces of paper and it's a little overwhelming. <laughs> so, it's a bunch of well, stuff. this will all be embedded in the board out there. Okay. I'm just showing kids and okay. pieces. That's what I was saying. It's, oh. it's all going to be in one place. Okay. 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 Um, all right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All in favor? All right. I have a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it.